what is up people all right so i was supposed to uh be uh doing the, the the jose didn't wake up stream and what i woke up to was a blue screen of death and i had to basically do everything all over my computer so uh, this is basically just me making sure everything works and hey we'll see where it goes um i'm gonna go ahead and throw the link out there and see what happens i don't think i set the right latency so we may be a little bit of lag so it is my bad but um other than that i'm kind of going to see what's going on didn't get an opportunity to watch anything today because i was dealing with this system but uh should be back in order and everything's good to go what's up amy what's up dreads how you doing my friend what's up jay i see you up there what's up matrix uh let me do this i haven't shared or anything if you guys, you guys would be so honored to uh share and maybe even hit the like hit the dislike i don't care but share it anyways um i know jose just was on like i as soon as everything logged up and i was ready to go is when i saw jose was on so i was like ah oh, test my system now so i didn't even get a chance to listen to it so i don't know what the topics are for today i don't know who's doing what but like i said you know I've decided, what's up, Lori? I've decided that with this uh, this account, it will be the new, I'm going back to the roots where I, you know, research, here to understand, no more anger here. I want this to be a place flat earthers are comfortable being again. But as for my Truth Army Soldier channel, that's where I'm going to keep it real. That's when you see that one, that's when I'm going to be real and, and telling it like it is. Just calling somebody out that just doesn't need to be saying what they're saying for instance last time the one i had or the first one i would say would be with dan dan the waterman it's completely dishonest and i don't have time for it uh if i were flat earth i'd be calling them out as well and uh that's what you'll see you'll see information that is still crap that flat earth needs to be mad about it as well and that will be over there but here we're here to learn answer questions ask questions and have fun into times well, that's it's good that's actually a good one because i've been thinking about the beginning of times or how would you express it we'll call it better yet we'll say the beginning of our understanding of time so it kind of may mesh well because as far as i'm concerned i i've kind of had those kind of thoughts too where it's like could it be one of those situations where our our technology was so advanced that uh that we basically, you know, what I said, you know, basically just wiped ourselves out in a nutshell. Yeah, but hello, Dan. The funny part is about your comments is everyone already knows what you're about, and I don't have to worry about you ruining any kind of respect I got from anyone else or. Or opinion of so you can speak on your own sounds ridiculous <laughs> what's up Bansal? how you doing sir also i'm getting uh i haven't posted in the discord yet so i'm gonna put some links over there see if anyone wants to come on dan you're more than welcome to come on i'm not gonna be angry with you i'm not gonna yell i ain't got no time for that not here There you go, Dan. I even make sure you're safe. Here you go. You guys may see a little timer. Come on, <laughs> that's just me making sh checking the the lag in the in the, the chat. Just want to make sure I know where it's at. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, Bansall, you uh, you flat? You go back to flat again? You know what? I don't know if that link would work. Let me see if it's this link I need to give you. 
Is this one different from that one? Nope, same link. Ah, oh, welcome. Hey, what's up, Uber? How you doing, sir? Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? You should come on. I, <laughs> I want to ask you some questions about your buddy Dan. Your buddy Dan's funny. Uh, my screen is way too big. What the hell's going on there? Oh, there it goes. Oh, there's almost, almost no lag. We're good. Otherwise, i got to reset the OBS. I don't want to do all that. But yeah, um, some of the things I wanted to get into is, is and I've been looking into, is a lot of this um, is still gravity. I, I think I'm going to stuck hole into that for a bit, a minute, because when you meander from the information, that's kind of when it's becomes difficult to, to remember or even function in how or even decide how it works i was having a good talk with uh, some people in the discord the other day and um one of the things that we were talking about was the uh was how einstein and newton perceived gravity and a shocker to me i had no clue i didn't know that um Einstein perceived in it, gravity as an instant. And I don't perceive it as an instant. So I'm in a quandary again. I'm like, well, what do I, what do I, I mesh to? Um, then came across another one that was talking about one of these things that, um, that, you know, continues to solidify um, what gravity is. And that would be the situation of um, gravity. So if, and we've kind of heard this analogy, if the sun were to disappear, it would take eight minutes for us to, for the sun to disappear to us because of the distance it takes for, and the time it takes for the light to travel to our eyes. Well, in the same situation, and this is what, how I understand it because of, in, in, in the example, it was uh, at the same instant, if the sun were to disappear, the sun would orbit or, or I'm sorry, the Earth would continue its orbit around the sun for eight minutes until it lost its that gravitational pull. And it, they had come up with the conclusion because of that, that gravity is as fast as the speed of light. And there are ways that we could test this. There are ways that they've come up with the ways of testing it. And, and in my opinion, it kind of solidifies a little bit more what gravity is or how, um, better yet, how gravity works. That's a better way of saying it. And if anybody wants to have that conversation, I'm more than welcome, because that's actually where my head's at. I'm trying to figure those type of things out, but doing a lot of notes and uh, research on it. Um, one of the other things was when we're solidifying these theories that, that are out there, understanding that these theories are something we can all go out and, and, and test for ourselves. Um, if you understand how orbital mechanics works and the, the planets work, you can track planets in our sky same way they do there are planets that we see we, we have we observe venus mars they're all in, in in spots in the sky throughout the year that would um that would correlate basically with what the globe model says that's the way it is go ahead and get this over into the link over here kind of a lot of people over at discord i haven't even i think i shared it to one place so let's see What are you saying, Dan? Sean does not believe we saw the balloons. Well, we did. Sean does not believe we were two Nathans. And you don't even make sense. I knew there were two Nathans. I know there were two Joshes. For instance, Josh, were you there taking a phone call at Salton Sea when those balloons went up? Because Josh will say no, and that's how I know that's not that Josh. Very good, right, Dan? Then I know what Nathan looks like. So when I said that was Nathan, I know what Nathan looks like and where he was for the observation. You can go ahead and watch your rewatch your uh, your footage, and it very clearly depicts that. So you don't have to lie to yourself. He's and Lori. He's talking about the balloons that they saw at forty-seven feet, and somehow that makes it flat. Yeah, hey Uber. If you want to come on and talk about that, I'd love for you to because I know in the one in the one that you were there, you were there for it. Like you know what was going on. You were involved. Whereas in Dan here has depicted a lot of stuff for that that 
that experiment, and it's very clear he wasn't there for it. He makes he the way he talks about it, he's crushing and ruining any experiment you guys did that would validify anything because he doesn't know what he's talking about. So someone who does know what they talk they're talking about, I would love for them to explain it because then we can actually get somewhere. And that's just my personal opinion on it. There we go. Okay, well, the links are there's some links out there. Yeah, but um Well, if they had shot, showed him before they raised him, where is, is there footage of that? Yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. I just let's let's keep it as real as we can. I actually trust you, Uber. So anything you're saying, I'm gonna take it a little bit differently than any way I take it from him. What's up, Crash? How you doing, sir? I need you to talk just so I can even get my settings straight. Still, can you hear me, Crash? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I sorry, I was turning stuff off. All right, in the chat, is he super low? I just wanted to make sure because, I, like I said, I had to redo everything in my settings and it was not fun. I am very angry. I got the blue screen of death. Way to go, bro. Well, it's like the 10th one I've had, so I knew what I needed to do. I just always kind of like half-assed it and this time I actually went through and did it correctly. Talk again. Yellow. Okay, there you go. That should be much better. <sighs> okay, perfect. Right. Yeah, I think it's just low on my side, but that's actually to keep me from talking loud because it's late over here. But yeah, um, what's been going on, man? What, what the hell has everyone been talking about? Uh, I don't know. I snapped out on cue earlier on Jose's. What did you do? Uh, she was talking about criminals being lower class citizens and shit. I actually, I would agree in a, in a sense, in a sense of what do you mean? Who are you talking about? Well, she didn't clarify, but uh. as an ex con, I was offended by that statement. Okay, yeah, then I completely understand. But we made up, I was on there. There's a weird panel he had tonight. Oh, uh, no, Jose's, yeah, everything but flat earth. Uh, yeah, it was weird. Why was it weird? I I, I actually enjoy those. Uh, it was it was nice. It was just different because Aaron was in there trying to change the subject every ten seconds. Oh my god, Aaron was there. Yeah, I'm so upset. I missed that. Aaron is a bundle of joy. Uh, that's an understatement. Uh, what you uh, saw? Well, yeah, you were there. Wait, were you there when he got stuck? Yeah, I was there. Oh my god! Oh no, I wasn't there when he got stuck. Oh my god! Wait, did you see the footage I did on uh, the other channel? No, I have. I've been busy with work. Oh. Shit. My, uh, everybody knows I have a service dog. She thought it'd be a great idea to attack a hornet's nest yesterday, so I've been dealing with that. That's. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading uh, Dan the, the the funny man's uh, comments in the chat, and he he's like, he keeps arguing. Like anything that comes out of his mouth is going to be make any real sense. You've already proven, Dan, that like you don't understand what you're looking at, but you want to explain it, and it's making it worse for you. This ain't the platform. Sorry. Um, if you want to come on and have an adult conversation, that's fine. And the reason I keep smashing all your all your uh, evidence is because you don't even know your, what you're showing to me. That's his biggest problem. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad too. Like, you just want to just relax. Dan, yeah. educate yourself first, buddy. That's the most important. Uh, my first real interaction with him was on here. The Was it on here or was it on somebody else's stream when he brought us all them citations and just had the cherry pick paragraphs? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the key thing to do. 
And I don't know if that was him, because he usually likes to do the same video, just cut up in different ways. That's yeah, his- it was him. He, uh, he he gave us a citation for the math they did on the laser test and just had the one paragraph of it. But when I asked the questions to fill in the equations, yeah. he didn't know anything. Yeah, that that's him. Yeah. Who else was in that hangout? There was somebody else there, too. Was that Aaron that was in there that day, too? I believe so. I- I don't know. They yeah, all kind well, of mesh. It was the night I was drunk on Jose's. Yep. They kind of all just kind of mesh. It's weird. Yeah, but it's it's like I said, man. It's one thing. I don't. It doesn't even matter if you understand these things, but don't come at it like you understand it, and then can't explain it, and then don't want to listen to how to correct how you're saying it. Because that's the only thing I'm trying to explain to them. You know, you're not, if you don't understand how index refraction works don't have a conversation about how it works and where you're going to use it when you're going to use it. It doesn't make sense. How can you defend any observation if you don't understand that observation or experiment or whatever it is? Yeah, it's impossible. It, it's, but you can't defend it or refute it if you don't know the math behind any of it. Yeah, and here's the other thing. Dan kept saying, and he, he'll continue to say, I talked to this person. The problem is, is he, doesn't, he didn't talk to anybody. He saw an interview or he talked to someone that did talk to somebody and it's like you're you're represent you're misrepresenting everything about what you were doing stop that like that was a that was the same time he was trying to get you to go do that observation with him over the uh salt and sea correct yeah, exactly and that's the, that's what really started it because it was all right you want to go do an experiment do you understand the experiment now that was the situation yeah. he didn't understand the experiment so what was the point like you, if you don't understand the experiment, what's the point in doing the experiment? Yeah, let, let's find out if you understand it first, and we can go from there. Hey, what's up, Huey? How you doing, sir? Hey ho, how are you? Good, good, good. Huey stopped me. Yeah, yeah, I know Huey's got an opportunity to talk to Dan. He has that same. He's got the, the special guy. He can talk normal. Matter of fact, we had a decent conversation, Huey. If you remember. We we're talking about the shuttle and its um and its return. And, yeah, and then he, then he went and then he went and attacked me after that. Yeah, it was weird. It like he we were perfectly here's fine. The here's the thing with that. I I tried to bring up that APU several times. He was just fucking ignoring me. Yeah, that's why I was repeating it because he wasn't listening to me. And then he then he accused me of going off. I wasn't going after him. I yeah, was just trying to get on his point. That's what I was doing. Yeah, I that's all I tried to do too. When- when uh, he snapped out on me at Sean's was he, he gave us a citation. I actually downloaded it and started reading it. And I asked for the numbers that he said he knew to plug into the equations to verify his experiment. But the guy's was, paranoid. I, I wasn't going you. after him. I was getting a bit persistent because he was ignoring me. That's, yeah, that's yeah. all that. Yeah. And what I got to the point, he was ignoring him right when it got to the point where it was, okay, well, let's think tank what they are. Cause he knew what they, they what they weren't. That that was the argument. He was trying to say, why do they have this and why are they doing that? And I had and I remember this because I had pointed out um, during one of the landings that we were watching that the the, the engines weren't running. They weren't hot. You, you can tell when a fucking jet engine's been on. And um, right then and there, it kind of he mellowed out a little bit. When you would think that's when everything was. You know, even and everyone was like not trying to at each other's throats. That's when Huey's talking about because out of nowhere, now Dan acts like Huey jumped at him, and that was when he actually didn't. That was when Dan realized he couldn't have that argument, and it kind of took off basically. But Huey was well, well, very respectful to him. He got, I think, he got irritated a couple times, but for Dan, I think he did I'm great. Not saying this is the case, but the thing is, it is possible he didn't know what an APU was, mm-hmm. uh, given how. Long it- Given how long it took him to respond to that, he could have easily Googled it. Well, that's what I ended up doing. I ended up going looking it up and everything. But well, the reason I'm, I did that is because I wanted him to realize you may not know it. And if you don't know it, that's fine. Just look it up and start researching. But he likes well, to I'm talk so matter of fact. He maybe didn't know what an APU stands for. He didn't know what the acronym meant. Mm-hmm. And how long it took him to respond. He may have Googled it because he was very smug when he came up and said, I know what it is. Auxiliary power unit. He yeah. could have Googled that. I'm not saying he did, but he could have. That, that might account for why he was ignoring me. Yeah. I mean, well, if you didn't know, all you had to say, what is an APU? And I could have told him, but I don't know. I, I, I certainly wasn't going after him. Mm-hmm. That, 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 no. That's not 
it was actually a pretty i thought it was, honestly i would have i considered it one of the few times that you have a that i've ever had a conversation with dan where it wasn't me getting triggered at all so well, that's why I, said that was because i do remember one of these conspiracy videos and after the shuttle lands you can clearly hear what sounds like jet engines spooling down and the, and the guy's like, oh, it's got jet engines on there <laughs> but what it turned out to be was the apus there's three of them apparently on that thing yeah and that's what you're hearing when, when you hear that gas turbine sound spooling down mm -hmm. that's why I yeah. and on. then you have russian vids video of the uh russian version of the space shuttle that was self-powered oh was it yeah they they did self-powered test flights on it but it never went into space under its own power okay yeah that thing was a failure right uh yeah i don't know i actually haven't done enough research to see if it did any missions i don't know if it did but i know it never made it to space under its own power that, but that's what they were attempting to do with it well it, it was going to get launched by itself no rocket to take it into orbit they were going to use it was going to take off with rockets or take off under its own power to get to altitude and carry solid stage rockets to get it into orbit. That was a you need rockets to get into orbit. I mean look look at the size of, of the of the shuttle's tank, that huge thing it sits on. That's how much fuel you're gonna need. Oh yeah. Uh, like I said, it, it's the Russians. They were trying to one up us and it failed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the other thing I like to tell I mean I, I think a lot of the things that happened during the space race some of it could be falsified. I mean, again, it was a dick set measuring contest at the time. And the other thing about the, the Russians' um, attempt to get to the moon, that was fraught with failures. Oh, yeah. Really, oh, well, you know, why did, why did the Russians quit? Well, it, it was a golden opportunity. It was going horribly wrong for them. They, they, were oh, nowhere, yeah. they were nowhere near close to launching anything viable. Yeah, and, and they so, lost and the a shit ton of people. Moon. When the Americans got to the moon first, they think, thank God for that, we can give up now, because it ain't going well. Yeah, they yeah. Lost. The Russia lost a lot of people. I always thought of it this way. I'm almost positive that a lot of what's gone on is is hush-hush because of the amount of people they lost. And because of that, it, it really downplays what it took. And I think that's what a lot of the conspiracy is about. You know what I mean? It, because a lot, of, a lot of people don't understand the details of what it took. Like I got, had an opportunity to talk to somebody and they really broke it down from an engineer's perspective. And he grew up at the time and he really made it clear, you know, what it takes, you know, when it comes to, um, being, have, being able to get these, these crafts into the sky. And it, it's, it's really weird. And that the, people aren't willing to understand that. And a lot of the Apollo stuff was rushed last minute shit to try and win the space race. Yeah. What's up, Sean? Thank I you. Enjoy. How are you doing, Maxwell? Rushed is a, a broad term there, but it, it wasn't exactly done at the safest levels. Well, it, the other thing is it was it wasn't so much a rush on unsafetyness. It was it was a mixture of take the weight away and keep it safe. So it was kind of yeah. they were they were definitely tipping the, the scale on those. I'm not I'm not dissing the Russian space program in general because they did have some achievements at that's for sure but the, their moon project was was horrible well now they yeah, got a whole I new know. one in mars so what's what's dan all worked up about i don't know keeps saying i'm lying about stuff when he's ridiculous like he he keeps mentioning the fact that there are two joshes and two nathans at the salton sea thing like i didn't know i don't know who these people are for one and two, I don't know what they look like or anything. Those have anything to do with the conversation at hand. Because if he says they can, he, at one point he said that they saw the balloons before they launched them. But I would think that'd be something that every flat earther would have footage of to show. You, it was know, true. It. you know, they would, because it would be a big gotcha for them. And, and I know Nathan was on, and Nathan Thompson was on that side. And I know there was flat earthers, but here's what it is. I know there were flat earthers on both sides. So what would be the reasoning for, you know what I mean? Like, how does that possible? How do they not see that, like, get images of that? Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. It's, you know they were on both sides of that. They're, 
and flat earthers are idiots, but they're organized no. well enough to no, no, do no. that. The ones that are idiots are the ones that like to spread information that they don't understand. They're not all idiots, trust me. Especially my like my boy Uber, if he comes in, he would be considered an, a flat earther that I have more than more respect for than a lot of people. I, I have he's a really good dude. Even when I was a flat earther, we got in a lot of good debates about stuff and without getting it disrespectful. I can to this day have a conversation about stuff. It doesn't need to get bad at all. He's a smart dude. The problem is, is something like Dan, who doesn't understand something. Therefore, he tries to explain it, and it's a, it's a, again, it's at the detriment of Flat Earth because he's spreading this stuff like gospel with no understanding. That is a big issue. It's an issue on both sides. But. Oh, big time. But call it, it needs to get called out. And if, I, for instance, if I had done it, if I did that, I ran around here saying everything I say is fact, period. I would expect a Glober in Flat Earthers to be jumping down my throat about it. Why not? What the hell are you doing, Maxwell? Trying to piss me Probably. off. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my mic was on. I was digging in a bag of chips. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Maxwell. And then, you know, it, it's just it's just weird to me that it, things are so questionable. And I'm not even talking about the shit. I'm talking about just science in general. I mean, everything we do f- from the time we wake up to the time we go to sleep, Science is to think, and it's not just a scientist or an idea that scientists want. It's literally how the world works, and luckily there's enough really smart people to try to explain it to us. And I think that's where the the issue really lies: the understanding that science isn't a entity. It's not something that that decides how something works. It doesn't work that way. And and again, anybody can go and. And fact check that themselves. I mean, I've learned more about optics doing this shit than I ever thought I would ever need to know. Oh, you have no idea how much, man. If I, dude, I, beyond what I thought I could ever learn in my life, I have learned in the past three years. And it's, it's crazy. It makes my brain hurt sometimes, but I like it. That's one of the reasons I like engaging in this stuff. I, I, I don't know everything, but I'm willing to learn a lot of shit. And you have to. Otherwise, there's really no point in you being here. And the realization is, is no, I haven't, there's very, actually, I've met a few people qualified to actually really be breaking these things, that conversations down, re, like, realistically. Because then, then again, we, all of us here, we're limited to our knowledge. So either we're going to be talking about a, some, a, a topic and may word it a little differently than it's supposed to, or be missing a few facts in there. But the realization is that, at least we're having to talk. At least we're learning. And that's how things progress. Uh, like, you know, one of the, those aha moments, they do happen. But it doesn't happen in 10 minutes of hearing how something works or understanding how something works. It takes a long time. It would, like, if, say the four of us, or the, yeah, the four of us in here right now, we were just talking about a subject for uh, 20 years. There may be a moment where we figure out a way how science is not correct in a way. But it's not going to happen over the two or three we're doing now and then having the conversation and stuff that's not even possible. It's like you really have to think about how things work and, and, and then understand it. And then we'll start talking about breaking it down. But we can't do that until we understand it completely. And none of us really do. I haven't heard it yet. Nah, that's why I try to stick to what I know. Air pressure, stuff that I use every day with what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. What's up, Unpaid Chill? How you doing? What's up, Montreal? How you doing? My Evening, Sean. I, li- I like that you changed your name. It, may- it makes life so much easier for me. And everybody <laughs> was complaining, so... But your name is Montreal, as far as it. I'm concerned. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let me see. I'm trying to... All right, cool. Yeah, Um. so what's everyone been up to? Uh, currently running a CNC machine to cut a set of custom cylinder heads at the moment in the background. All right, no worries, uh, Unpicho. Yeah, uh, that sounds fun. I mean, and I wanted to talk to you, Crash. I, I mean, your analogies are on par. <laughs> but, but sometimes, dude, when you like, what were we talking about the other day, earlier, I think it was earlier or last night, I forget what it was, but you were talking about something that's, that measures the, the spacing and bearings. 
and you lost me. I saw yeah. them on the TV. They were grinding a crankshaft, and that's just so fucking complex. Yep. There's nothing yeah. complex about a little plastic gauge. <laughs> yeah, plastic gauge is what I was talking about. Yeah, that seems complex, and if it's not, it's because I have no clue what the fuck it is. It's, you're going uh, to line that thing up on a lathe, and you've got to machine all the um, eccentric parts on it. Nothing really oh, so it's a, it's, yeah. it's a measure. It's well, a no. tool to measure to keep it a symmetry. Plastic, no, plastic gauge, so you lay your crankshaft in your engine block okay. with, I, with the bearings you think you're going to use, yeah. and the stuff literally looks like fruit by the foot. You unroll it, you cut a little snippet of it off, and it's got different sizes of that material when it's flattened out on the label. You oh. tighten everything down and crush it, and then yeah. you match up the label and do it, and it tells you what your oil gap is on your bearings. Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about now. I've never used it, but I, I know. Uh, well, it, when I did redid the top end on my truck, essentially when everyone does their stuff, it's already it's already spaced. It's already measured. It's already That's already been done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's why I've never had to use it. You're doing your custom, right? You're. Yep. This okay. is stuff you do like. Uh, Once you bore if an we're doing engine a new and, engine, huh? If we do it, if we do a new engine, I'll just measure it with a mic and check it because everything should be fairly standard on it. Or we or just double check it. What I know is, but if that's a, a mapped engine, right? Where your everything yeah. is dialed in. Yep, blueprinted. But yes. uh, the biggest time we use it is when uh, somebody blows their shit up. And we've got to repair it, and then you get into ordering custom bearings and other shit to make stuff a little bit. Uh, when they want to, when you keep the block and everything. Yeah, because okay. like if you uh, if you run low on oil pressure and you spin a bearing and you score up the crank, when we machine that crank down, you change the diameter on it. But the engine block, if it didn't get hurt, really doesn't change. So we use plastic gauge to make sure that our oil film, the the oil gap will stay the same. Uh, I see. So do I need to order a thicker bearing? Do I need to machine something a little different? Or if we weld up cranks for custom purposes and machine them down? Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, that oil gap's critical, right? Yeah, very. I mean, you're talking a difference of ten thousandths of an inch is the difference between having oil pressure and smoking a motor. Mm. <laughs> That's quite a skill. Oh, yeah. And then you get into Harley Davidson's, which don't use lead Babbitt bearings, and everything's completely fucking different. Yes, yeah. I, see, when you break it down, I kind of understand. And I, I mean, I know exactly what it is now. I just probably never used the shit ever. Now, back to what we were talking about. <laughs> it just popped in my head. I remember that. Um, so, what was the best part about What was the end of time? What was that conversation like? Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it got, it got really interesting. Let's, was it just basically? Anti-government. Some anti-government guy came in. Anti-everything. Oh, Aaron? Oh. Yeah. Well, the funny part is, is like I think we, I've had this conversation one time. We were talking about someone brought in the, the idea of uh, anarchy. And so we, we entertained it. And it was basically, okay, well, if we had anarchy... You understand that it would then form into a government type situation over again. Exactly. It, it, like over time, it's exactly what happened. And the person was like, no, it wouldn't. Okay, went, well, then all these little factions, who are they going to talk? Who's going to represent the people with, that has water? Or who are they going to fight for it? And it's like eventually, no matter what, a government forms. Actually, that was explored in a, uh, a story. Uh, sci-fi story i believe the title is and then there were none it was yeah, a short cool. it was a short story um and i don't want to give too much of the plot of the way away unless in case someone wants to read it it is available online um you can download the text but it's a very interesting exploration of the concept of anarchy as a functional form of society but wouldn't that be the case or just in the think tank of it wouldn't that only really work in a, a low population society? Ah, there you go. Yes. That was one of the key points that's made in the story. Yep. The populations have to be small so that every person knows every other person. 
Yes. It, it, an That's anarchist really system way works too small. An anar- well, I think any anarchist, any anarchy type system only can work if everyone's voice is heard. I think I that's think kind it of would ever work because there's always going to be a group that forms that wants wants to dominate. That you know, I mean, there's well, always going to be a group well, what of if, people well, that go around and say, "Well, I want this," and but that's why you can do the, because the idea of the population matters. Because put it this way, let's just say for shits and giggles, there's only four village. There's four four villages. And one village is in the mountains, one village is in the desert, one village is in the plain, one village is at the beach. And they all are able to gather one um, substance or something that, that, that the others can't. Then you have a reason for trading. At that situation, there's no reason for anyone to need more than the others around them. It just it coexists. But the issue is, is that if that popu- if any of those populations get bigger and need more of that um, the supplies, that's when it becomes a situation. Again, it's population that matters when it comes to an anarchy system. An anarchy system is perfect when everyone is heard. A government is formed when there's too many voices to be heard. Exactly. Because, in a sense, you yeah, need an, I mean, an anarchy system to take over a government. But the, realiza- the idea that government is bad is, is irrational. Government isn't bad. It's the government officials we have running our government is bad. A government is per- we need a government. It is the almost the only way that works. What's up? Okay. What are you doing, my friend? If, you wanna- any, if anyone's interested, I'm posting a link to Google uh, Google Drive hmm? that where I've got a copy of that uh, short story. Oh, nice. It That's is cool. it is a nice lunch hour read. I'm yeah, it's it's a good it. short story. It's well written too. I yes. definitely grab that because that's that's kind of what, how I got the idea of to look into these things, like an anarchy system and and how that all works. Because it's it's one of those things that like it it sounds bad, but it's kind of good. But it can be bad, but it's expected to be bad because that's why we don't have just anarchy systems running around and that work. That's why we don't deal with people with that kind of that kind of idea idealism. People well, think I've, that cycle clubs are all about anarchy, but they are some of the most structured groups of people you'll ever meet. Yeah, but yeah. but how long did it take for the thousand other sects to actually realize that they need to work together to be a, a, a actual club? You know, what I mean, it, for a while it was different Hell's Angel groups doing their own thing, and that's when oh, yeah. you know what I mean. And well, essentially, just like they became, say, when, essentially, they became a government. You know what I mean? They have a structure now. That's all, that's oh, yeah, all government is. All clubs are very structured now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every freaking one of them. I think that's a key point of it. It's not government. It's the people running the government. Exactly. It's, well, it's just like science. In, it's just like science. People bash science. Science isn't so, like these people. It's Science is the knowledge of and we use tools to verify it. The scientists that use these tools, yeah, they can be assholes and corrupt, but someone right behind them is going to catch it. Exactly. It's, it's human nature. It is. In in the past, I have said that communism, socialism, and anarchy are all perfect forms of society as long as people aren't involved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not, or capable people, because it's not about a system. It's literally... You guys can't do it for yourselves. We'll do it. But uh, I'll do it. I'll think for you. Problem is, is then you're at the whim of someone. But hey, those communist systems don't have to. They're not worried about which people are corrupt. They know. <laughs> We're sitting here thinking about which one is corrupt and which one is whose ideas is trying to do what. Well, in a communist system, there's no question. <laughs> you know, that's the end of their ups and downs of it. We don't. We have to verify. They have to legitimize anything they do to us, whether and that's what brings the lies. I'm pretty sure those governments just don't say anything. I I just heard Gwyn say that scientists are afraid to challenge the status quo. And I, I didn't say anything. But no. Are you serious? That's what gets them out of bed in the morning. Can you imagine how wealthy and famous you'd be if you could overturn relativity or evolution or something like that? You realize how famous and and rich they would be? They could write their own freaking research checks. Yeah, that's, why, that's exactly why everyone keeps saying nowadays, you know, 
you get a Nobel Prize for that. If gravity is not real and you understand it and can explain it, you have overturned so much science. It's insane. Why are you talking to us? Will they listen to anybody, though? Will they listen to an outside voice? This is the question. I have a feeling that I have a feeling that our government knows a lot more about gravity than what is led on to know, be known by the mainstream science. Okay. If they know more about it, here's the thing. What do we know about it that you have shown to be wrong? That's a realization of it. They may know a lot Nothing. more. Nothing. The realization is, it of, is the, these the, flying saucers that are caught put this that way. defy all, all laws of physics. But well, yet... Well, I fully believe that there's a there's an institute that builds these crafts that we probably couldn't imagine could fly the way they do, and they do. I understand it. I think it's called Skunk Works. The problem <laughs> is, is again, gravity, as we understand it, less than science, less than government, still works. So where is Kelly where's, Johnson, where are these people making it not work all of a sudden? Kelly Johnson was a former head of Skunk Works, and at one time he was quoted as saying that if you can think of what Fifty years from now, fifty years after that, you're breaking up very badly. Yeah, yeah, you're really well. On to something Montreal said. He said, "Would they listen to an outsider?" You see, here's the problem. This idea is on kind of quote your club. It's just wrong. Anybody could submit a paper to a journal. You could do that yourself, Montreal. Yeah, you can. Anybody- sub- and you wouldn't submit it to one journal. You would submit it to as many as you can get their hands on to. You go to everyone. Side and side. It doesn't work like that. That's not in understanding, Montreal. And in, in, in any of those pu- publications that publicize that new theory that was correct, they make a lot of sh- money too. So understand that they, they're not just pushing people away. And, and prestige. Yeah. They want to be the publication that put that through. You've got to get a news. Why is that out there? There aren't too many papers. Is my audio better now? Yes, yes, excellent. Sorry, I, I was checking on my CNC machine, so I don't know if I got background noise or what. No, you're very clear now. Clean. And that's the issue. What I was saying about what, what Grimm said. Grimm makes excuses like that for the for his electric universe not being accepted. Well, when he started on, uh, you know, the killings aren't real. That's when I had to leave. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I left as well. I was just hearing Q going on about it. What were they talking about? Yeah, I'm. Oh, oh, never mind. I, know, I think I know what you're talking about. Speaking on the electric universe, you guys want to touch on that a bit? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Anything you want. I was watching. Um, I'm sure you guys know Ken Wheeler. Actually, no, Your, I don't. Uh, apostasis. Oh, magnetic tester. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, you. Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't explain them better. Tattoo that you have to have tattoo though. Hey, I didn't. I didn't point it. Somebody else did. But yeah, I know what you mean. Anyways, this guy is uh, truly un- unbelievable. Sorry, he's, he's pretty quirky in the nutcase. I don't see. I don't know. I was watching some of his stuff. Yeah, it's pseudo science. Um, for example. He, um, he has these two magnets and, uh, you know, like we think magnets attract each other, right? Well, we know. <laughs> we know this, right? Of course. Everybody knows this, including myself. Well, <laughs> you should hear the way he explains it and he shows it. He doesn't just explain it. He has like this, uh, this film. I don't know how to explain it, and it shows like uh, current, magnetic current, when you put it over a magnet, and uh, and you can plainly see it. Apparently, oh yeah, the magnets don't attract each other; they accelerate towards an empty spot, an empty space. <laughs> believe it or not, and you can actually oh. see this. But wouldn't that be the case of of finding that spot where? The north, south, north, and south would 
balance itself or something? This is way beyond that, Sean. You got to see this. It's like mind boggling. I, I still haven't wrapped my head around is, it. Is anything uh, like yeah. quantum levitation or something like that? No, 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 no. no. I figured out, like, or I didn't figure it out, but I found how they do quantum levitation. It's not what they're saying. Can, can you name one article he's had published in a, in a, in a legit scientific journal, Montreal? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys that I'm running. I'm running this by you guys. I'm just saying what yeah, I saw. No science. It's nonsense. What he's, what, he, what he's saying. Now, if you wanted to see the magnetic fields of two bar magnets, all you need is some iron fillings and some paper. Well, they have the magnetic uh, visualization film. You can buy it online. Well, yeah. Is all you need is a feral lens. I think that's, I think that's what it was. Is all you need is a feral lens. So can, can, you, can you tell me why he hasn't had anything published in the scientific journal, Montreal? I, I really don't know. I really, That's why I'm asking you guys, because uh, I know you guys are into this stuff. He seems more of an entertainer than a scientist or trying to show something. If he submitted a paper or a journal that goes straight in the trash, it's nonsense. Yeah, he, this guy's an entertainer. So, I mean, I... I just giving you my opinion right now. I really would have to watch it to, to see even what you're talking about. I'm trying to find one, but everything is just kind of him lecturing, not really showing uh, it I yet. I forget which one. There's lots I'll of try fun to find. I'll try to find it. Lots of fun things you can do with magnetic fields if you know what you're doing. I mean, this guy does a lot. Look, I've, I haven't seen stuff. a lot of this guy, but I mean, that's you've got to like see his videos, guys. It, I'm like he did, he huh? just doesn't talk. He shows stuff. That's what I'm, I let's be clear here. But I'm, he's just like on everywhere. Why do we need a better browser? Um, cre being creative and React projects. Uh, <clears throat> photograph National Enquirer. What's up, dude? Try magnetism. Huh? Um. Hold on, I think I saved it. Hold on, I'll try to find it. I, I just posted a link in uh, side chat with uh, where you can buy some of that film for like $4. All right. Let's I haven't used it for anything we've had going on. I haven't really needed to, but... I'm not, not saying that expensive. the film is something special. I'm just saying uh, it's showing you, like he how he explains it, the uh, the interaction of the of the magnets. No, he's just saying that it shows. He's showing you where you can get the stuff that he was using. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Just well, I want to get some of that. Yeah, just sure. in case anybody wants to play around with it, because I bucks. I love stuff like that. I've got a slide rule collection. I've got Sterling engines. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff. How long does a sheet engine, like that last? Like, does it What's last that? forever? Like, I, I don't know. I don't have any. Uh, it depends on how it's made, I guess. I would think. I've seen it used. I've never owned any. That's it. But yeah, I love the, the, you know what the I eclectic string stuff. I know no, what I you tried, tried doing once. once, and I wouldn't admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you ever see those perpetual <laughs> magnet uh, things? Those goats were married. <laughs> I tried it, man. I, I swear I tried it. But what happens is uh, they, they end up, uh, you can get it spinning for a while, but they end up uh, jamming, you know, like uh, north and south jam, boop, and it won't spin anymore. Which is why it's not called perpetual motion. Exactly. It's impossible. Impossible. Oh, I knew it was impossible. I knew all the laws that was breaking, but I tried it anyways. I mean, I could, it's there you go. <laughs> I have a uh, there's a web there's a YouTube channel that I've seen gone to a few times. It's funny, and every single title is is titled "Perpetual Engine." <laughs> it's like, oh, you can't do that. Stop that. Yeah, but then you see things like where he's gotten into a video editor and smeared out the cord and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it, it, well, he's, it, it's even worse. It's they're so clearly, so clearly not uh, perpetual. It's just like he's just clickbaiting every time, like some oh, yeah. other uh, content creators. 
But the only thing that comes close is the V gate, but, the but magnetic yeah. V gate. Because I, I, I wanted to get into this and and, and, and talk to Uber. Um because, like I said, I know you were there for part of one, and you were involved, involved. So when you say something about it, but in the things I've heard, I can you know pretty much run with it a little bit better than when your buddy Dan does. Um, because again, he he smears the word and it irritates the crap out of me. And you were saying in the chat that there were some things that he was saying differently that I that I or I was saying wrong, I guess, about it. Uba, you there. I may be away from his mic. No worries. I think he may actually be driving. I'm not sure. But um, we'll, we'll get into that when he gets back. But um, what are they saying? Let me see. Ah, oh, Uber. Yeah, he's probably driving. Um, but do you have any other questions, Montreal? We we'll get into because I like when you stir shit up. But let's try to make it. Well, any question from you isn't flatter. So I just perfect. stir shit up for no reason. I know. I'm just fucking with you. I just posted a link to a, a video of my side hobby of building brushless motors. Does it anything to do with the topic? Magnetic I'm, I'm, field. This guy I'm, has I'm, a I'm magnet. Just kidding. Dude, I'm kidding. Jeez. All right. just, he was yeah. just talking about that. Hey, yeah, we can hear you now, Uber. Okay, cool. All how, right. How you doing, sir? What's up, dude? Okay, so, uh, yeah, Dan in the chat was saying that you didn't know that there was two Nathans and two Joshes, but I know you know that because I <laughs> talked to you about this like last year. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> see, that's the thing because he's talking like he thinks that like well, first he's talking to me like I have no clue about what was going on. Um, Dan, I, again, I was a flat earther. I, I have flat earth friends still to this day. I know you were there. I was planning to go to that one and he keeps talking to me like as if I had no clue about what's going on. I know who people are. I know what they look like, even more importantly. And regardless, him saying, like, he said that, first of all, he hadn't said once that we that he saw the balloon before it went up. He had never once said that. He just says these things, and it makes no relevant difference. Like, when it comes up and they see that a certain height, he was arguing for that. And he wants to go and do these tests again, and he doesn't want to admit that he doesn't understand. Like, how do you go do a test and argue about it if you don't understand how they're done that's my only issue well no, but that was that that's not, really not even an issue i mean the test was how long ago it's not like anybody hasn't said what they had to say about it the only issue is, is he's bringing it up as if he was there and he may have been there the problem is is well, actually he wasn't there <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh like, it gets better and so you guys were asking why there was no footage of this, right? Yeah. My friend Joshua Vale, God bless his heart, mm. is probably still kicking himself in the ass to this day because he wasn't recording because he figured somebody else was. Ah, damn it. But that, I mean, realistically, that would have been some, that's, what could I have said about that? I know. But the thing is, is like, I know it happened because I was literally standing over Josh's shoulder <laughs> going like, dude, aren't those the balloons? Like, and well, even, even the thing is, is that if, if, if you guys, how do you say it? If anything, it'd be more of a, your guys' argument, or it's not even against you guys. The reason no one's arguing, like Dan's the only one arguing about this. The reason you guys aren't arguing that as your, your evidence it's because you guys know you fucked up. No one's exactly. bringing, no one's bringing it to you guys point. about it because it, we didn't have it. Okay, so what are we talking about? But Dan is bringing these things up as if he wants to, he like, those are your evidence. And it's like, that's not evidence. Because he's shown me those, that salt and sea footage and all that stuff four times now. And I keep saying, dude, stop sending me these videos. Like, I know what's going on. I know what happened. I know where things went where measurements weren't understood and they threw them out. It's like, I, I get what happened. I know what was going on there. Like, and he keeps, it's weird. He yeah. There were a couple times in chat. I had to shoot Sean with a tranquilator dart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause he gets, he started getting under my skin, but like I said, I don't care anymore. Um, I, I got my whole, I got the other channel and I, I fucked it. I got all my, ugh, my anger out about him. I got that out the other night. So, did you guys catch the footage that IIG finally put out? No, I didn't. 
Okay. The guy who was in charge of the IIG team, uh, James Underwood or Underdown or Underdown. Sounds familiar. All right. I think it sounds familiar. They finally, they finally released their footage. Oh. In a little clip. Uh, so if you want to, it might be helpful if you like pull that up at some point later on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I'll check it out. Um, that has nothing to do with like, FE Core, right? I would like to hear your opinion on that because I noticed something off with mm -hmm. what they said of why the strike disappeared. Like, Everybody came to the conclusion that the strike disappeared because, like, I mean, not everybody, obviously, yeah. but like all the globe guys came to the conclusion that the part of the flag was hidden by the curvature of the earth, is what they said. That's, That's what, what I would they, assume, yeah. But, yeah, okay, okay. But, but yeah, I'd like you to take a look at that footage. I'm not going to tell you what I saw, mm -hmm. and I want to see if you are able to see it as plainly as I did. Yeah, yeah. The issue was okay. Um, where's that? Where's, it, where's the video here, at? Uh, let me uh, I'll look it over it real quick. While, while you're doing that, uh, Crash, I have a question actually, a couple questions for you, if I may. Is that okay, Hi, Sean? Okay, oh, yeah, Crash, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are, are, you, are you set up to build custom motors and generators? I can be quite easily. Then we need to talk. Um, let me let me post my uh, my email in uh, in chat because I've had a design for a generator that I think will work, and it works on paper, but I don't know if it would would work in reality. Oh, I can verify that stuff. That's not that hard. Yeah, I'd love to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post my email, and we need to chat. Are you on my Discord server? Uh, I'm on a lot of Discord servers, and other than personal messages, mostly I kind of ignore it. Oh, okay. Uh, I get so many notifications from people saying, oh, so-and-so has posted a video on XYZ, and it's like, I've already seen it. I don't need this. Don't, don't you see uh, and I'll, particip I'll participate in chats and whatnot. Uh, there's, there's a preference you can click that will only let messages that are addressed to you. Did you know that? No. Yeah, there is. I had that problem with it. I was getting, when they put at everyone, I was getting bombarded with all these messages. And I mentioned it to someone. I said, oh, you can change that. Oh, on Discord? Yeah, I knew about yeah. that one. But I got your email copied, Chills. Uh what kind of generator shells? Did you say something about aliens earlier, Maxwell? Well, if it if it works the way I, I think it may work, then it would be DC with no brushes. No oh. commutator. Oh, well, yeah. That's yeah, but so would bad. it be a... So it'd be a permanent magnet generator. It would, but but it's it's a really strange design. I've had this in my head for almost forty years, and I've never run into anybody that could actually test to see if this would work. I'm, yeah, uh, I can test something like that. That'd be awesome. Anyway, let's let's get back to topics and whatnot. I mean, I took an old AC motor and took it apart and cut grooves in the dang where the uh, eddy current plates are. And I freaking put in permanent magnets, neodymium rectangular magnets, and that thing puts out some voltage, man, I'm telling you. All right, thanks. Yeah, I'll definitely check that just, out, Uber, just, and then I'll get back to you on it. Just it by hand. And that's the, the the release footage that the current release footage, right? Yeah, that's okay. what IIG saw with their cameras, what they released. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's their. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. And Dan, that's 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 how it works. If there's something you want to show, you ask someone to look it over. 
<laughs> and, and and then guess what happens? They go, hey, yeah, uh, we're I like you, my friend. I'll check it out. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to give you my opinion on it yet till you see it. Oh, exactly. You know? That's because more than I don't what? want my opinion to sway your opinion yeah. of it. Yeah, he's still in the chat. Dan, like, I don't know what his deal is, but it is very clear he likes to burn bridges. Burn bridges. Uh, I can tell you right now. No, he's never said nothing about you, so don't worry about that. But Dan likes, Dan likes to talk. Put it that way. You kick him out? I, I don't care if he does, dude. I actually, I really don't, uh, I don't deal with the free group much anymore. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's the thing. It's, and that's, that's why I like you. You, you are you. <laughs> you want to go talk to someone about it? Go talk to him. If you don't, you don't. But yeah, if, if I ever want to go out with them, I know I can go. Did you kick him out, Sean? Who? Dan. No, Dan hasn't tried to come in here. I just wonder why he's in the in the side chat. He won't come in. He usually comes in, huh? Oh, because I've I've told Dan. You no, know, I I made it very clear. You're not going to come in here and, and do that yelling, ranting thing he does. You can have a conversation like an adult. I just put the link in the chat again. I don't care. Anyone comes in, but I'm I'm not I'm not listening to that yelling child crap. Not here. You can come to the other channel. We'll do that. <laughs> but I this is the uh, Zen Sean now. Well, there's not any channel that will let him on to do that anymore. Yeah, I, I, that's what I've taken from it, and I've the way I've heard he he likes he's burnt a lot of bridges, and that's how I know. And I don't remember I don't remember who's there, but he came out. He was on a hangout, and he said these three words: "said Oh, we're not live," and he went on a rant about people, and yeah, recorded. But I'm not that big of a dick. I'm not going to ever release that. But Dan knows he's a shit starter. And he's not here for flat Earth. He, he made that very clear. Production value. What's up, Jose? Uh, what's up? Damn. <laughs> no. I'm paid uh, chill. I sent you an email with my contact info. So who is it that's working on like engine blocks and stuff? Because I'm actually <clears throat> on like Friday. I'm having my I'm taking my car in to have a uh, the head gasket replaced. That would be that would be our funny. buddy Crash. What the hell? Yeah, I'm starting to lose fluid. Like it's not leaking anywhere. It's burning. Like could be a cracked head. Crackhead, bad head gasket won't know until you get it tore down. Yep. Yeah, that's the worst. Like, if you're leaking oil or you're leaking transmission fluid or you're leaking water, guess what it is? <laughs> when it's not leaking anything, that's when you go, fuck. Have you got coolant in the oil? Have you checked your oil? Yeah, my oil actually looks really good still. Yeah. Mm. That means there's no water in it. That's good. Yep, it probably just it's what kind of car is it? It's a Prius. Yeah. Good luck with uh successfully getting the head done. Well it's got hundred and seventy thousand miles on it already. Oh good lord. Yeah, he, you're he's an Uber driver. Man, I was really have you you seen those articles that they were talking about um the ups and downs of being an Uber driver, like the um the cost versus wages and and uh, I think like there's probably I know there's two states that are suing Uber for that um, because they think that the the rates need to go up more because of that the wear and tear on your vehicle and Uber's just kind of breaking in on it. Uh, it's gotten to the point in some places where they're actually paying you less per mile than what you can write off for your car on a mile. Oh wow. Well, I think you know what that is. I think that's because they're also trying to come out with the whole rent our car shit now too. Yeah, I saw. I got an advertisement the other day for rent my Harley. Yeah, they're trying to figure out any way they can. Yeah, and the whole time they're ruining like the thing that actually built them up. It's nuts. Like, there people will use your car. <laughs> well, like a successful business model would be to add on to what you already have, right? Not add on and destroy what you already built up. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It, it's weird because you would think that, but what they're thinking is money, 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 money. So if 
they can think of a way to get more money for next for next year's papers than it, or reports, then it, it's better on them. They get you know, their investors invest on the bet the better years that they have. So if they can make a year skyrocket, they get more money from their investors. And if it screws you, screw you. <laughs> it's pretty much how they look at it. I mean, Uber, like all these companies like that, in my opinion, they're taking advantage of it because right off the bat, it's like you guys are making money doing nothing. Like, see, before before it, Uber was big around here, we had the scab cab drunk cabs where people would just put their phone number on the bar wall. Well, cab companies, the reason Uber took off and Lyft is because of the cab companies because they monopolized the transportation game the rates it, that they were making people pay versus what the drivers were making it was it was oh my god it was it sh- they should be put in prison for what they did to those guys like they were charging also, but the convenience dude oh yeah but er- they're everywhere Uber to this and day Lyft, it everywhere. is still a pain in the ass right to hail to unless you're in like new york and you're hailing a taxi okay but like uh, California, do you, how often yep. do you see people hailing taxis in California, Sean? And, and never anymore, ever. And when you did, it was a thirty to forty-five minute wait to get a cab to your house, and f- to get from where I am to like say an airport, it would cost me sixty bucks. Uber, I can do it in twenty bucks. It, it's it's a night and day. No one uses cabs anymore. I don't even know how they still exist. Exactly. It's like freaking payphones. <laughs> Like Uber keeps thinking, or they keep like cutting the rates below, the, like way, way, way below. Yeah, they're, they're the taxi rates, and it's like, dude, you don't even need to do that. You're already like saving whoever's taking this like a shit ton of money. And for a little bit, I was taking a lot of Ubers, and I was talking to the drivers and shit, and like, like they they're making like you're saying they're making options for me, the the rider that make that benefit. But it screws the driver. That whole Uber pool, that shit is, it rips drivers off, basically. If I get Uber pool, the driver gets less. And if we don't pick anybody else, he gets way less. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, so Uber gets away with all their crap because they say that they're not a transportation company, right? Keep it independent drivers. Yep. Yeah, they say that they're, a, they're actually classified as a technology company. Yeah, they're, they're, the only responsibility they have is that your GPS works and that your riders and drivers connect to each other. It's mm-hmm. basically how they explain what they do. They are not the driver. That's why you have to have insurance for your car. That's why you have to have registration, your license, and have a newer car because they have to know it's safe. It's not the, after that, it's not their responsibility. As long as they, I, they meet that criteria, they don't have to worry. I have see. Issue. I and, right. and I drove I drove taxi for years, and I personally I'd much rather be with a taxi driver than than an Uber or Lyft. Well, that's because you, there's zero qualification to become. But at the same time, it got to the point like um, I know in Vegas is a really good example. It becomes very cutthroat between taxi companies because of the rates they were having to pay versus what they were making. Yeah, and that's when it becomes you get in dangerous situations or. You, drivers flake or you don't know who you again you, you really don't know who you have well the the companies i was driving for they ran a full background check both legal and uh driving history i think uber is starting to do that now maybe not i don't know 100 percent, but I, I know they're doing a kind of like a background check their background check has always been a joke oh, okay yeah, yeah. well anyone, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah uber See, would never let me fucking be an uber driver <laughs> The, the thing is, is, you know, as, as a professional full-time taxi driver, you learn traffic patterns mm-hmm. and you learn how, you know, where, where all little shortcuts are and things like that, because the only way you really make money driving taxi is by getting that ass out of your seat and getting a fresh ass in your seat. The turnover is what makes your money. It's, it's not that, that old myth of, oh, you're taking the long way around to get more money. It doesn't work that way. I make more money if I get you out and someone else in. Yeah, I, I also noticed that Uber really regulates that because if you were able to do that, you can make a lot more money. But like I, I noticed on the, the phones when they're driving, the speed limit is on there. 
uh, it flashes red and you to keep you like they're trying to keep you from getting too many. The only upside, the only the real downside I see to Uber is is like you're saying, there's no regulation. Um, I've been in two Ubers now that the driver fell asleep, <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, I was ready to to punch him in the back of the head. And the reason for that is is, is there's no real regulation to how many hours you can get. Like I'm pretty sure last driver I talked to said that. Uber does make it so you can't work more than a certain amount of hours, but you're able to break those hours up. And if you break, say, six hours up, but you don't sleep or rest, that <laughs> the middle of the night is still going to be the, the worst night of the world. And I think that's what, like, what you were saying, unpaid, where you, the trust factor in it. Um, the cabs were more professional in a sense, but it, that's still the driver's responsibility. I don't, I can't, I don't think that's. <laughs> should lie on whether or not it's a company or not so you know i also want to clarify something when when i'm talking about you know taxi drivers are more professional than uber and lyft i'm talking as a whole industry i'm not talking individual cases okay well yeah okay i see what you're saying yeah dude i've heard some horrible uh stories from writers that tell me about other drivers and i'm like i don't get how they're even on the app are you, are you ready for this oh, this is and this is worse than the sleep the two that slept on me you want to hear my worst uber story okay i get i go to work I get it's raining i get picked up and it, i did the uber pool so there's like three other people in the car two other stops this guy is livid he's upset he didn't turn the app off 45 minutes prior so lucky me i'm the last person hour into this this ordeal and he's on the phone with his girlfriend cussing at just cussing in a different language and the last thing he says is i fucking hate uber <laughs> we we get off the freeway and here's where it gets bad he pulls over in my fucking neighborhood and says hey man i gotta take a piss he gets out and he goes and pisses next to a fucking house four houses down from my house i called uber I have never been so livid in my life. They said, we're going to give you a refund. I said, I fucking, I don't want a fucking refund. I want to make sure that guy never in his life drives a fucking for Uber again. Because that shit was insane. Ah, uh, I was so pissed. So pissed. So pissed. Man. Yeah, dude. Horrible. Like, well, we've, we've had stories of, of fellow taxi drivers getting high with their passengers and then getting into multi-car collisions and driving away. And this is the same guy in the same incident. You know, it's just, <laughs> you, you get horror stories from both sides. I don't know how Vegas doesn't have more incidents with their taxis. Those guys are crazy. That's the guy. Yeah, I've, for, I've, been, uh, I've been to New York once and when I was young, so I don't really know how they drive. But I've been to Vegas a thousand times. And taxi tra- cab drivers out there are ruthless. Like, they don't have a brake pedal. They don't have side mirrors, <laughs> but they go. Like that idea about? that you're saying, um, unpaid, where they got to get asses in the seat, they take that to the fullest there. What about truck drivers? Are their hours governed? Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, matter of fact, not only are their hours governed, but they have to log every hour. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, new rigs will force you to shut down after eight hours. Yeah, the uh, new automatic ones. Oh, I've seen a few of those that have timers on it. A lot of the companies. Unless you're inner city. Well, no, because then you're CDL on. CDL drivers don't have to. Aren't they they have, yeah, they are. They're, they're regulated to think, 16 hours. Because that's what I just got. Not, yes, they are. Or here in California, in, they are. In England, they have. I, a, I told. Hang on, I work for this tow truck Max. company. Hang on, Max. I work for this tow truck. Huh? Hang on, uh, I work for this tow truck we're, company we're in, the, in Minnesota. Hang on. Yeah, go ahead, you. They have what's called a tachograph, and that records your hours. Yeah. Um, the old ones with a little disc with a, with a, like a, a stylus, and you can look at that, and you can tell when when the vehicle was at rest and when it was moving, and how many, how fast it's going. You can record all that. Yeah. And what were you saying, Max? You were talking about being a tow truck. No, I just I like I I, <clears throat> I like taxis. I I was a tow truck driver in Minnesota, and we did snow emergencies, and the cops would literally just wait for. They'd announce it at like ten o'clock, and then if you didn't move your car off of the even side of the street by eleven o'clock, we'd have our, our tow truck company would 
line up on the streets and wait for them to write the tickets so we could tow the cars. Yeah. Uh, one time I got a call. <laughs> I towed a taxi in that was running. The doors were locked, so I couldn't shut it off. But I towed a taxi in into the impound yard, and the thing sat and ran for like a day and a half until it <laughs> ran out of gas. Aren't, in that point, aren't you allowed to break the window or some shit? It's not that expensive. <laughs> no. But like... Uh, I was going to say, because I got a buddy that does tow truck driving, like tow truck drivers, their hours are different. Like they go on a 24 hour schedule, but that's also with the understanding that there's a lot of downtime. And that's also why they have to log every time they do pick it, do a, a run because they have to log how long it took and then how long they've been out. But they've, they're, they're really buttoning down on regulation of how long you can drive. Um, well, I'm sure now they are. Oh, they are. We ran, we ran for four days straight. It's, put it this way, it's almost impossible to drive a truck across the country nonstop. You, it's impossible. You're at some point, you're if, get if busted. you got a partner, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. But even then, you still have to log your hours. You <clears> both, <throat> and they can. St- if you both ran nonstop, at some point, they're going to make you guys stop. Or no, no. If you did it right, they won't. But that log matters to everything. If your log is incorrect, you're, you're going to sit for eight, eight to ten hours. No, yeah. Heard- my dad was an over the road trucker growing up, and I can remember him having to keep his handwritten logs and yeah, having was, in the fucking truck all the damn time. Oh yeah. And, this, and then it, my stepdad was over over the road truck driver, and I'd go over the road with him. I was only fifteen years old, and I was driving that damn thing. Well, that's <laughs> just because he'd good. fall asleep at the fucking wheel, dude, driving ten miles an hour. I'd be like, jackass, let me fucking drive so we can get to where we're going. He'd be like. Okay, just make sure you wake me up when we get to the fucking way station. Yep. <laughs> that, and that's those way stations. They invent, like there was for a while. There was a way to 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 doctor your uh, your 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 logs. Basically, you would take slower roads or take longer roads. Give it a reason for something to happen, or your or make up time somewhere. It's kind of hard to do it now. It was a science to do that with paper logbooks because I remember my dad, uh, he'd have his actual logbook and then he'd have the one he'd show the state police for that time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep that's how our overroad, and anytime I've ever done overroad, I used to do, uh, I did, I transported uh, contaminated dirt from, from San Diego to Arizona a few times. And yeah, they, man, they're all over that shit. Like it is a science. You you had to have done it, got in trouble for it, and perfected it to make <laughs> to understand how to do it. Oh, and, and Sean, to answer your question, yes, driving taxi in New York City is freaking brutal. Yeah, I I, I never got my my whole family's from New York. I've only been there one time, and I was young, so I wouldn't remember if my life depended on it. Never did you work been- with yeah. unpaid shills. Did you work with Lodka? Uh, me and Mr. Gravis never met. <laughs> no idea who you guys were referencing. I forgot thank you very guy. much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I forgot the guy's name. He's a, he was a comedian. Andy Kaufman. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. He played a character called Latka Gravis in a sitcom many, many years ago. Uh, yep. That there was a make, there was a big deal. If you're into wrestling, there was a big deal about him and Andy Kaufman oh, and that. some wrestler. Um yeah. Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah. I remember that. It's sickening that I remember oh. that. <laughs> Jeez. It's like I I grew up in such a rural area that we did not have cable until I was in high school. What? Damn. Sorry for you. I remember rabbit ears on top of the television set. Oh yeah, yeah. When they switched Fuck from yeah. when, they, when they switched to digital, I was pissed. I was like, "What the hell?" I used to have twenty channels. Now I got one. I remember having to climb up the damn aerial antenna in the backyard because the storm had done blue dad's antenna down, and I was only one to go up there and fix it. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. We have AT and T and Direct TV for that. <laughs> Uh, I live in a little bit more rural, uh, more uh, populated area. We don't we don't be climbing on shit <laughs> and tornadoes. My, and my father did uh, radio and television repair when I was growing up, so I got to get up on roofs and 
install towers, things like that when I was you know five, six years old. What is, are there TV repairs now? Because man, oh yeah, those old lamps are those type of TVs are running out. What what, what they repair the new ones now? I, I always thought the new ones if they blew out, you threw them away. Yeah, no, it's pretty much a disposable society. Yeah, uh, there, there's still a guy here in town that rebuilds LCD screens. So yes, yeah, we, we have fiber TV here. Say what you have what fiber. What's that? You know, it's like you know fiber. Oh, oh. oh the fiber yeah, it's optics. TV that makes you want to shit yourself. Yeah. So the Did fiber connection does the internet, and also the TV comes down that as well. I, I Where are you at, Huey? I remember England. No, Japan. I, I remember when fiber optics was the shit. I, me and my dad, uh, company he was working for when I started when I first started construction, we laid. I want to say about 35 miles of fiber optic on a military base. They were in love with that stuff for a long time. Yeah, it's not as susceptible to EMP attacks. Uh, yeah, when under, I was in uh, it's underground. When I was in college, we played around with the. Uh, it was just starting to get used in Mercedes and Jaguar. It, and that's just a, a cable with more. Lines basically <laughs> more it's just fishing line. It's supposed to be, I know it's supposed to be stronger, less breaks. See, I only know the, the basics of it, you know, when we're laying it and how to lay it and what not to do and to do to it. Other than that, well, the, the thing is, you can carry a certain number of signals over copper, but with uh, fiber optic, not only can you carry more a lot of signals you can carry a shit ton of signals different because ways. you could use different light frequencies and that'll completely be ignored by the receptors on the other end for you know various frequencies yeah, let's yeah. say you've got one at 550 another one at 600 uh, nanometers by the way and another one at 650 you could use each of those three channels for example to carry say a hundred conversations yeah and, and, and the receivers would only pick up what they wanted to pick, what they needed to pick up. Right. And by the way, I'm just, I'm pulling numbers out of yeah. my ass, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but the example still holds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, what, what are they using now? Can bus. What'd you say? Can bus. Can what? Cannabis. Can bus. Cannabis. Not cannabis. Uh, most high end electronics and cars and everything I work with is a CAN bus system. So it's a single line <laughs> communication to attach multiple components to each other. Don't use that. If you, just crash, if you use that, you're, no one's going to hear what you said. Everyone hears cannabis. Like, it's like, you just use marijuana, and that's all it sounded like. You just everybody get high and just talk about what they're going to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> they they need a couple of roast beef sandwiches and fall asleep. <laughs> Does it work? It works for you. Does it work for me? It works for everyone. Okay, we're going to bed. <laughs> I kill for some Oreos right now. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Yeah, by the way, out in the side chat. <laughs> What's that? So no, okay, yeah. Oh, I wanted to tell everyone what's coming up soon. Soon I will be having a debate with Lenny. I'm sure you guys know Lenny in the chat. Um, on veganism. Because I'm against it. I'm not even against it. I'm just against people who think veganism is the only way. So we're going to have a debate about it. And I don't think he understands I've had this debate many of times. So I'm, I'm more than prepared. Are you going to bring up that Canadian bacon is just a, a no, conspiracy? No, crash. Everyone knows Canadian bacon isn't real bacon. I don't think we even need to be talking about it. That's less That's less worth talking about than Flat Earth. Uh, them's <laughs> fighting words, Sean. <laughs> Sorry, it's just reality. It's not, station, it's not it's stationary and really it's not flat. Is he raw vegan? Don't mess with our uh, Canadian bacon, eh? It's not, hey, it's not, that's not, you gotta have ham. <laughs> Stop trying to be American. <laughs> now, see, I was talking, I was listening to, uh, to this guy on, uh, the radio many, many years ago when, when I was living in Montana, I was listening to KOA out of Denver and I lived in Montana score one for the, for the globe earth. Um, but anyway, he was, he was talking about, uh, the paleo diet. This is back before paleo was a thing. 
and he said his his book and his diet plan was based all around what could a naked man with a stick get <laughs> and the host of the show said well in downtown denver about seven to ten years <laughs> <laughs> I have another one. If we if we were not meant to eat meat, Mother Nature wouldn't have given us canines. Period. Right, or chicken McNuggets. <laughs> exactly. Well said, sir. Or a lovely bacon cheeseburger. Oh yeah. Because the way I've always seen it is is we we know if we were most likely nomads in the beginning. I mean, let's face it, we were nomads in the beginning. And as nomads, you're going to be hunting and gathering. So you probably were nitpicking at vegetable or berries and shit like that. But the reality is what, what kept your village alive was the, the hunting, the meat that you got for that for that season. That's why they figured out ways to preserve it and, and chill it. And, and you knew where to do this at. And yeah, it changed in a lot of places. If they were in the tropics, I guarantee they probably eat a lot more vegetables and stuff. But our digestive and system. Fish. Yeah, yeah, exact fish. Our digestive systems are designed to 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 do what they do and if you i'm sorry if you go straight vegan you're gonna have to start taking supplements which right there and tells you your body is not made to only consume one thing and my argument has nothing to do with not eating vegetables i think a balanced have diet ever, is perfect have you ever seen a vegan that doesn't look sickly oh i've seen a no. lot i used to fight with them the problem is it, it, it took them a long time to get back to to that to that fighting strength, when they started, it was bad. Like it was really bad for them. Strongest man in the world, vegan. I guarantee he's not straight vegan. He's a lot of supplements as well. I'm not saying you can't su you can't supplement and be okay. The difference is is that you have to supplement, and when you do those supplements, you are then offsetting the 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 healthiness of being a vegan like it's it's portrayed i don't know i know another guy that's been a vegetarian and a vegan his whole life and he doesn't take any kind of like weird supplements or anything he would have to. i'm i'm sorry i cannot give up my bacon and, and i can I, totally off bacon but yeah and like for Wait, one, one of his one of the other arguments he had was is is it would be better for the environment and that realization is that a lot of the issues we're in is because of uh, farming, basically. Uh, a lot of farm, a lot of the stuff we farm and harvest never makes it to a plate, so that's a waste. Which means all the emissions, all that stuff that it takes, it was a waste. Very rarely do does a whole herd go bad. Well, then you've also got to take into consideration bile. The function that bile serves. One of the functions is to break down cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Well, we if, if we're getting cholesterol in our blood, we have to be getting that through animal sources because there are no plants that supply cholesterol. Yeah, matter of fact, it, it's it's a it's the reason for it being not as quote unquote healthy would be the the energy energy to used to consume what you're eating, and it's and, and it's uh cons and the energy it gives you it it outweighs. You're always going to use more. It takes more energy to eat these things and digest it than it, they give you, which is why, in my opinion, it, when when they did settle down and stop being nomads and they started farming, even then they would have needed meat to continue the, the work hat, the work that they needed. I think that's one of the biggest reasons cows became so. They basically genetically made cows for the purpose of not needing to go hunt, but needing that meat. Who's drinking? I am. <laughs> Cheers. I just want the top of one. Cheers. <laughs> I've yeah, got food, so I'm good. I'm drinking various juices laced with some paint thinner that was cleverly labeled vodka. <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm, that. That's I'm about right. Sure I'm too, I could run a small block Chevy off the shit I'm drinking. Yep. Tastes or sounds tasty. Empire. Oh, it tastes like hell, but a little bit of it will get you really fucking drunk. And that didn't sound fun at all. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention also was, and this is going backwards, uh, I just remembered it, was uh, I mentioned the 
fiber optics being resistant to attacks by EMPs. Yeah. That's another reason that the military was looking into pneumatic computers. What is an EMP? Electromagnetic pulse. Oh, okay. Pneumatic computers and fluid computers are awesome things to watch. Yeah. Yes. What are those? What yeah. Was it Will Faraday cage work against an EMP? Of course. It what, could, what, yeah. Well, it depends on the, the the size and the size of the EMP attack. Have you guys seen the uh, microfluid dynamics computers that were entirely on essentially microchips made out of small channels for fluid to flow through? Okay, so I'm looking up. I looked up pneumatic computers. So, tell me about these. Oh, they were they were being uh, developed by the by the initially by the military by. Uh, Oh gosh, uh, I'm trying to remember if it was D O or uh, ARPA or or DARPA, which DARPA. which one of those two at the time, because DARPA became ARPA. Oh, oh really? So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which which era this was being researched in, but uh, they were looking into developing pneumatic and uh, and fluid, well, basically fluid computers. Uh, to to basically take over flight controls in jets, bombers, things like that, that would be experiencing uh, um, the hijackings. Well, no, experiencing potentially high EMP uh, influx because of proximity to nuclear explosions, that sort of thing, like oh. B fifty two bombers. Also, like if 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 um, what do you call it? Uh, Air Force One was. If there was a nuclear attack and Air Force One had the president, they don't want the fallout to affect the the electronics on the plane, so they would. Well, use... not the not the fallout, but the initial electromagnetic yeah, pulse yeah, from sorry. the that's what I meant from that's, the explosion. Yeah, the wave. I, but also, uh, I just posted a link in the side chat to a video of explaining a microfluid logic circuit that made no uses sense no electric. <laughs> it uses no electronics. It uses different fluids to do the same thing that a digital circuit board would do. Yeah, yeah. the train. I think that was RC. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, the 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 fluid computers are are fascinating. Um, it's something I've played with in the past. That sounds very complex. Yeah, I just posted a link to a small logic circuit made with a microfluid computer. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now, and that looks way too complicated for my brain right now. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I just see colors and things moving and confusion. Yeah, that was like the worst 11 seconds of my life. <laughs> wow. I, I don't even know if I can even start to, to understand what I just saw. It, it's basically a uh, using fluid to create a uh, a binary output. Yeah, you just you spoke gibberish. Start over. <laughs> so our entire digital world is based on nothing but ones and zeros. Everything's okay. either on or off. Oh yeah. Ooh, you I, have a I have a binary translator. Those things are awesome. And rather than electricity, it uses fluids because electricity can be all mucked up by electromagnetic pulses. Ah, yep. So, is it like the currents ran in the fluid? No, the fluid is the current. But how does the fluid how does it, how the does fluid completely how, replace how does the fluid transport? completely replaces electricity? How does it transport the information now? By being gated from one channel to another. Ah, yep. so it's more of a it's like a more technical mechanical system. It's like the valve body in your transmission. Okay. Ah, so it, it it doesn't send a electrical current to to actuate something. It actually uses the the pressure that the fluid can. Uh, effectively, so, yes. Yeah. In in as simple of a way to to explain it to me right now, yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get I get that. Well, that's, there's more to you, it. You understand you understand that binary is ones and zeros, right? Yes. That can be represented easily by either pressure on is one, uh, no pressure is zero. Ah, uh, okay. So, but wouldn't it be the face of it to be somewhere along the line, like how you, how how your display would read it? You're you were breaking up a little bit there. What was that? 
I was saying, wouldn't it have to interface with some kind of electrical? I, I think the more of the point of it is, is that you would try to hit it and be like, so if an EMP attack went off, they wouldn't do it at a central location. They'd probably try to get it at a, a junction, so to speak. Well, you'd, you'd want to use it in your critical systems, like flight controls, that sort of thing. Oh, the so that, with, with the, an electrical system, doesn't it? Yeah, but the controls well, there, would there still are work. There are electrical systems, but the thing is, they were they were developing this, as I understand it, they were developing this as as a backup or an adjunct to the electronic system, so that should things start to go all diagonal on them, you can just flip off the electric systems after they turned on the pneumatic or hydraulic systems. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Did you? Okay. What I'm asking is, it would have to interface somewhere down the line with an electric system, wouldn't it? Well, it would not have to. Uh, <clears throat> The it's, ones I've seen that were had a practical use had a <clears throat> display that had the fluid monitor on it, which essentially just turned shit off and on. And then it had a digital display to go with it, but the digital display was redundant. Because mm. it's it's not as easy to read the outputs from a fluid or a pneumatic computer as it is a digital output that we're used to seeing. And what about things like memory and... and um you know, storage, you know, like hard drives and whatnot. How does that work? You can't make those pneumatic, can you? If it's binary, yes. Oh, okay. It's essentially on and off. I, I was looking into it because I wanted to use it, trying to develop a way to use it for pneumatic valve control. You know, you QE for, me. for memory... <laughs> Just imagine, say, a small, uh, tiny balloon. You inject, uh, you inject some fluid into that balloon to make it swell up a little bit, and then you use fluid pressure around the neck of that balloon t to close it off. Okay? You've written to that memory. Now, when you want to read it, you loosen the neck of that balloon, and the pressure will cause the liquid to come back out, or the fluid to come back out. So that's when you're reading it. That sounds like a lot of moving parts. Pardon? That sounds like a lot of moving parts, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's why it was finally dropped, uh, because it was just too bulky. It, there was no way they could they could shrink it down enough to make it a feasible substitution. Yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, now they're getting to a uh, micro level for very basic control. But it's still cool technology. It's interesting, all right, but I can't see you catching on from that. You know, you hear that, uh, you know, thus and such is in its infancy, right? You've heard that phrase before? Well, n fluid computers are not just in their infancy. They're in the, you know, you're wiping the sweat off your forehead and lighting a cigarette stage. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah. They're, do you guys know what a Tesla valve is? Yep. Yes. Yep, the little loop de loops. These yep. things are the in the eye of the daddy, right? Uh, a Tesla valve is a water pump or a fluid pump that has absolutely no moving parts. Essentially works by allowing fluid to move very freely in one direction and restrict it quite difficultly in the other direction. Trying to find one, so you pull it up. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to find a little short video. Okay, here we go. Here's one with, uh, here's one that's only 30 seconds. Yep. I'll share that in uh, side chat. Yeah, pull it up right now. Oh, you got it? Yeah, or uh, once you put it in the side chat, I will. I was, I thought okay. you were yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you'd already found it, there was no point. Oh no, no, no! I was, I was saying, uh, I was, I'll pull it up once you put it. You share the link. There okay, go. here you go. Where is it? Tesla valves are fun to play with. Start it over. Let's 
Pretty damn cool. Is that fluid in there? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, what, what it does is, like, if you use it on a well pump, like an old-style hand crank well, it allows you to push it down through the fluid, and when you pull it up, the fluid's so restricted flowing in the opposite direction that you can use it as a pump. Wow. Without any mechanical... Uh, no valves, no moving parts. Anything. Yep. There, or I should say, there's no no moving valves. I should say. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's all using uh, the hydrostatic pressure to make that happen. Well, it's just using Bernoulli's principle and the Venturi effect. There's a couple other things going on in there, but yeah. They're fun to play with. They're great to see how accurate your 3D printer is, too. You know what's cool is the, the RAM pump. Have you ever seen one of those? They're old yep. school. They just run off a of head pressure. Yep. What was what was that? You were breaking up a bit. A RAM pump. A RAM no, I'm, pump? I'm not super mechanically inclined, so you'll have to uh, forgive my ignorance. It's just a RAM. It just runs off a of head pressure. Oh, yeah. It's a high, like a so hydraulic like, RAM system. What, yeah, it just runs. It just, whatever, the, the more head pressure, the better pumping it is. I mean, they're all over the internet, like these off these off gridders or homesteader people that are accessing water that's yeah downhill they can put this ram pump down there and and pump water up twice as high hey you want to know what they have to use to do that gravity Ooh, gravity <laughs> yeah gravity nah, yeah gravity it's, it's bobbity and droppity yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. <laughs> and things were going fine until now. <laughs> <laughs> now we're trying to entice you. I know you are. I'm not going to take the bait. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> We tried with bacon. We tried. <laughs> we tried to with everything. It didn't work. Well played, YouTube Ninja. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got into the pneumatic computer system because I thought it'd be a great way to control pneumatically activated valves, but it got too complicated way too quick. Yep. Oh, jeez. It sucks up energy, and it's not as fast, and it's not as not as small. Yeah, response time became my issue. But as a concept, it functions. That's cool. Yes. I'd like to know what? whatever happened to that biological computer that they were that uh, biological computer they were they were building back in the nineties. <laughs> Oh, when it got old enough to vote, it moved off to uh, Italy. <laughs> yeah. well, there, there was an article or something I seen in like Popular Science or something where they're trying to make a uh, processor, a, a biological processor that worked off of like proteins. Sean, is there a problem in my microphone? No, you're a little low, but no, not really. Yeah, just Maxwell's interrupted me about three times now. I start speaking and he just jumps in. Yeah, it's hard to tell with him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying, um, I, I'm just having a hard time thinking how you miniaturize these hydraulic. <laughs> when you think of a semiconductor, it's got like billions of little transistors in there, right? Yep. And, and you got to understand also that a lot of this research was being done in the 60s and 70s. You know, we yeah. didn't have the, the microfluidics uh, mm. uh, processes and 
and machinery that we have now. So you can miniaturize this to the same degree as you can with with um micro with, with um semiconductors, can you? No, <laughs> no, no, not even close. Well, that, that that's a big stumbling block, isn't it? You, yeah, you that's. Can, we've gotten to the point where you can make basic circuits on essentially a one-inch square piece of tape. In fact, there's a guy that does a YouTube video on how to make a basic logic circuit using a uh, shrinky dink film. Yes, yes, I've seen that. Um, uh, but you're not going to get much. I'll find him. Yeah. But his logic circuit actually works pretty fucking good for being made out of, you know, kids shrinky dink material. <laughs> Is that a scientific term? No, it's a. Uh, no, it's literally, a that's what he made it out of. <laughs> you uh, you need to shrink it down, but he didn't have any way to make it, so he drew it out on shrinky dink and put it in the oven until it shrunk down, and then cut it out and put it all together. Wow. And it it actually worked quite nicely with very few leaks that he had to fix. I was fairly impressed. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting idea, though. Uh, my bad, I'm all quiet and shit. I'm. Like checking my system and all that good stuff. <laughs> Make sure everything's still good. I'm not sure if you guys heard. I got a blue screen of death earlier. I was supposed to go live this morning for Jose. And turned on my computer and everything went to shit. b sod. It sucked. Which version of Windows are you running? 10. Mm. 3.11. <laughs> Something like that. The answer to everything is <laughs> windows for work groups well the hard part is like i i had to learn it all myself so what i ended up doing i have like everything on my an external drive so applied science so i basically yeah exactly so basically every time it happens i just start over and i have to remember to go back into my system and turn down everything i turned up and sometimes i forget and sometimes i remember yeah, the uh, the channel where he did the the microfluidics is called Applied Science. Two words. That's it. So say it's yep. a channel that he does a bunch of other stuff on too. But I thought it was pretty fucking cool. I think someone's directed me to that channel before. Gotta remember. I like AVE and uh, Elemental Maker also. Good stuff there. Okay, I've been yeah. I'm I'm subbed to this channel, so yeah. There's there's lots of obscure fun tech out there if you're willing to look for it and do the research to see if it's viable or not. Yeah. Well, other than a nuke, what else can cause an EMP? Uh, I can think of a couple things off the top of my head. Transformer blowouts, uh, surges, uh, lightning strikes. Any yeah. any time you've got a large amount of electricity that suddenly flows really fast. It's like a it's like surge. It's all a EMP attack is a a, a a surge attack basically. Well, the last thunderbolt day, my my computer monitor just went blue. I, I remember, it, yeah, it was a, it was a reaction, all right. I, I thought it was fucking broken, but it was okay after a second or two. It went back to normal, but yeah, lightning strike did do that to my monitor once. The best way to explain what EMP does. It's, it's like this. When your alarm goes off, if you notice the speakers, you're, if you have like a radio playing, your speakers will make this weird sound. That's a form of an EMP attack. It's, it's creating that surge. Not enough to do shit, but it's a form. Or when I pull up next to you on the uh, the shovel head with straight solid core ignition wires and your car starts acting up and misfiring. <laughs> <laughs> this just sounds evil. <laughs> oh, it is. And I love it. And again, uh, one of those explanations, I'm just like right over my head. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I don't you know. Most of your cars nowadays use really high resistance wires. My shovel head doesn't. They're uh, straight, solid, solid, solid wires. So they make a lot of radio noise. Okay. Yeah, if I, I put to a 2001 to 2002 Camaro, I will cut that car off at a stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so also. Because one of the biggest does they were talking about with those EMP attacks and all that stuff is the threat of, and how they've come to the realization that our grid system is so shitty. Like I'm not sure if people know. Like if there was an EMP attack of that standard, 
<clears throat> that magnitude of Beriet, like our system would be shot to shit. And it's not even because the attack is that good. It's because our grid system is like it's set up in three like three sections instead of the dozens it should be. Oh, but see, so, uh, also back in the nineties, we had an EMP attack up here in Canada. It took out a whole province. Seven yeah. million people were up. An, EM, an EMP attack can also be uh, a, a coronal mass ejection. Yep, yep. That's yep. what it was. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what it was. was yeah. it called? And, 80s or something? So I, I'm just, I just use the term EMP attack, meaning something that's attacking the system via nature or man-made. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it means the same thing. Was it a CME or was it a... Uh, it, it, a it's a CME, but it does the same thing. It was a coronal mass ejection. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not hearing about... The, the power supply in Canada somewhere going out. Oh, that, where was it? That, that was a CME, but it's it's essentially the same thing except for the the difference in terms or because of where it came from. Like you're correct, yeah, it came from the sun, and, and the term you use is what it is. But in that situation of explaining an EMT and what it can do, it's the same thing. That's why when you guys are stuck and your cars don't run from that attack, I'll be quite happy to be getting the fuck out of Dodge on my shovel. But the CME is Charles Party. <laughs> I don't think it's a necessary electrical surge, is it? I don't know. It, it creates one. Well, the, the thing is, is uh, you know our, our electrical grid, for example. It, okay, do you know how transformers work? Yeah, sort of. Okay, uh, how about generators? Yeah, I understand generator. Okay, the the three things for a generator are an electrical conductor, mm -hmm. a magnetic field, and then relative motion between those two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as long as those three conditions are met, as long as you got a conductor cutting through that magnetic field due to relative motion, you're yeah. going to you're going to induce uh, a, an electrical current in that wire. Yep. I okay. That. So when you've got all these these uh, electrical particles electrically charged particles bombarding the atmosphere it will it can induce electrical currents in our electrical grid system yeah it so shuts everything down it so it can, either, it can either cause lags or surges or, or it could blow a whole electrical grid yeah, like basically, see the I, like these are actually the actual way the grids are set up in different cities. Like the way they're supposed to be set up, there's supposed to be more junctions in here with surge protectors, so to speak. Whereas huh? they don't, and that's the problem with the grid system. Not to mention, most of these cities are all connected to each other rather than linked to each other. Yep. That's the problem okay, with the grid so system. CME is, a, is an EMP, is it? Yes. Yeah, but it's okay. it's from the sun. It, whereas an EMP is more thought of, thought of as a weapon or as you know, coming ma more man made. That's the only difference between the terminology of it. But they do the same thing. Well, you can de you can detonate a nuclear weapon that like ten one. miles or so off the ground, and it'll create an EMP. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole idea of the EMP attack. It's called a hemp. H E M P, and the idea that's what we were worried about Korea doing or North Korea, I'm sorry. Um, because the idea is, is, is it takes a lot more to make a nuclear weapon with or with nuclear capability than it is to just put a little bit of nuclear capability and make a large EMP attack. The, the war, everything about the projectile is, is cheaper and easier for an EMP attack. Yep. Have you guys seen the the video on this uh, scientist? He was one of the original creators of uh, of nuclear reactors. He claims he was bathing in the water, and you see him eating the uh, the, oh, the, the radioactive uranium. material. Have you guys ever seen that? I've never seen him bathing in it, but I do know for a fact the amount of uranium he was taking, and the the the, the what do you call it the um. The time it takes for your body to, to to basically cleanse itself of it, he wasn't taking very much, and I'm pretty sure that guy's dead because of. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. He had a Geiger counter and all. He was. Yeah, but uh, it's 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 already. You gotta see this. But the thing is, it's gonna, uh, dude, an orange, a banana, 
they have radiate uh, one of those Geiger counters will go off one of those things as well. On an orange. Yeah, everything has uh, some kind of a radiation in it. It's just the way life works. We may not have very much, but it's there. Have you have you seen what I'm talking about? Have you seen the? Huh? the... I haven't seen him bathe in it, but I, I have seen the ones where he's putting it in his hand and he licks it out of his hand and shit. And he puts it, he licks weird. it. Here's you here's something that'll blow your minds. Here here's something that'll twist your brain up in a knot. Any alcohol for consumption that's sold in the United States must, by law, be radioactive. Yep. What does that it's mean? It's how they alcohol content. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I told you it'll twist your brain in a knot. Wait, why does it have to be how radioactive? So? Radioactive. Depend, depending on the source of the alcohol, it can either be radioactive or not. Plant-based alcohol sources are radioactive. Ah, because they have radi because the the natural radiation that any correct has basically is still measured. Correct. Ah. Yep. Oh, the natural. Okay, I see. Yeah, well. yeah. So instead of not equating it into the uh, the percentage rated, it it's it tells you what its sources the amount of radiation in its source. Well, the <clears> thing <throat> is, it's illegal to sell. Uh, you know, say petroleum-based alcohol at, for consumption, you know, just just for health concerns. So by making it illegal, then that's saying, you know, what you can sell must be radioactive. So it's, it's not directly saying, you know, it's got to be radioactive or else you can't sell it. It's just saying you can't sell the stuff that, that wouldn't be radioactive okay. because it's not plant-based. I see. I see. Ooh, I get it now. Yeah. Yep. Carbon 14, baby. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that whenever I bring it up. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> it, it's confusing at first until you really think about the, the <laughs> well, of with the carbon dating and stuff. Because a lot of people think radioactivity is, is, is only to nuclear activity or, or any, but it's no, it's, it's basically the, what our bodies run off of or, or, Something like that, right? If it's well, we're we're exposed to to certain levels of radiation our entire life. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's sheep that need more copper in their diet than cows. And that's yeah. And that's there was the same study like that that I was talking about the D. That's almost like where they hope DMT that, came up about because it was well, about the amount ingested of it. Because the sheep, the originated, the, the domesticated sheep originated in areas that, that had higher copper in the soil. So we have to supplement, you know, when we take these sheep and we move them elsewhere, mm -hmm. we have to supplement their diets with more copper so they can stay healthy. Uh. <coughs> Excuse me. Isn't granite radioactive? Mm. I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Mm. So if you live in an area where, where there's a lot of granite, there, you, you, you'll probably have a higher radiation <coughs> than elsewhere. Let's find out. But see, we, we live in an environment where you know, we are exposed to uranium. Uranium is... is you know, not not an everyday thing, but we we're exposed to it. Yeah, it says it says granite, like other stones, may contain veins of naturally occurring radioactivity uh, elements like uranium, thorium, and their radioactive decay products. So it's natural radioactivity. But it would but be that's what makes things. But that's why you know man-made radioactive materials such as plutonium or lawrencium. That's why those are so poisonous to us because. Throughout our history, we've never been exposed to them before. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Oh, I just had a difference. coughing fit. Say again? I just had a coughing fit. <sighs> yeah, I had one too, but you guys didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope y'all didn't hear mine. Okay, so I'm just like kind of looking up 
about natural and man-made radioactivity. It's, I'm just looking at one. It says five different ones. I found that video. I'm going to post it in the okay. chat so, of the guy eating, but it's long, so you guys are watch at your own risk. <laughs> I'm not watching anyone eat. That's disgusting. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I hate that guy. I can't watch this. So you got to see that this no, guy's no. not a quack. You no, got to he hear is. him talk. He, he is. He's not telling people that the amount that he's eating isn't deadly. Um, and and I remember because I actually got angry about this topic because there's guys that walk around talking about how radiation is actually good for you and how you got to get these radiation stones and interact with them a certain amount of like they don't understand that like the difference like we're talking about now because the stuff that they're buying is stuff that is like has uranium and shit and it's like dude you're gonna kill people stop posting shit um but like uh let me share this real quick so i'm looking at five different man-made and natural um so i didn't want to do that one share again so like the one that we were just talking about is the uh the cosmic radiation that's that's a, the sun the sun emp basically uh ra radiation from just uh, terrestrial sources so that's that'd be natural yep radioactivity in the body that's what we we're just talking about basically what all your atoms and all that stuff are pop charging and moving for well and you've also got deuterium in your in your system and tritium okay what, what, really oh yeah really well not so much so i mean it may only be a few atoms but you you've got some yeah it's, it is there yep you guys know that the Chernobyl nuclear site is thriving with animals everywhere? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure some of them, most likely at ground zero, probably have a, a, a genetic change, we'll say. Extra arm growing out their eyeball. I went through all this shit after that Fukushima incident, and every day I was monitoring the levels around here. And there was, there was all this scaremongering going on, you know? About yeah, exactly. All Whatever happened to California? There was a cloud. What's up with California? How many people? Uh... Wait, wait, what? I'm in California. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Oh, you talking You're about still food? around? No, no, no. So that wasn't the cloud. You remember the more, scare? That was in the water, like in the currents. And no, it, there was n nothing near deadly or any even exactly some limits ever made it close to California. In a uh, side chat, I posted a little clip from Ford, Forbes magazine, February 2, uh, 2016. I, I remember when, there's okay, a lot of servicemen on, on a U.S. naval base here, and they evacuated them to Hawaii because of the radiation scare. And it turned out they, they got more exposure on the flight going than they would have done by staying. Yep. Yeah, and that's, that's why we need to avoid knee-jerk reactions in our day-to-day -day lives. Because I didn't know anything about radio. I did a little flash on it, monitoring the levels well, every day. Well, one of the biggest things they didn't make you realize <clears throat> right offhand is two things happened. One, the, the systems failed. That's problem one. Problem two is, is that when a nuclear reactor does that, it doesn't, it's not like a movie. It doesn't blow up doesn't everywhere's not <laughs> fucked it literally just melts its way deeper and deeper <laughs> that's the worst it could possibly do the problem is is when the it, it, it's able to get to the outside world but then again it, it's still about how much is getting to the outside world because it doesn't and how quickly yeah exactly so if it's seeping into something it the, as fast as it's seeping in mother nature is doing its job to dissipate it so once it gets to a certain point it's done its deed like it doesn't have any doesn't have any energy left it's not not as radioactive it's almost to a nil the particles of radi radi radiation have dissipated that much it's it's really it's really disingenuous with the way they explained it when that happened they made it really seem like a radiation a radiation pocket was going to hit the currents and our beaches would be green by morning and it was never in a million years would it work like that i don't even think the <laughs> reactors I'll... would be allowed to have that much nuclear nuclear uh um activity going on there 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's a reason they allow them to be next to the ocean. If it was that much of a seriousness, they would never in a million years allow that. It'd kill too many people if it was that deadly. The reason I knew about granite was because what happened here was that you got all these old ladies buying up. You couldn't get a dossier meter here, but they all sold out. So you got all these old ladies running around with dossier meters, checking everything, and they find um, radioactive. Like, oh my God, it's it's Fukushima radiation. No, it wasn't. It was granite. It's always been there. No one never bothered measuring it before. Well, it seems like when I when I was just reading, um, because of, like the different sediment layers, it seems like granite would be the most. It would contain mo the most of the radioactivity, you know, natural radioactivity than anywhere else, than any other type of sediment. It was like buildings. They were used to granite in the construction of a building. Yeah, yeah. And, they all, and they're all like, oh, my God, it's, it's radiation. We're all going to die. Yeah, no. but that sounds like people that use those gagger counters but don't know the rates of what things are and that you're always going to get a reading on something. And they were finding radiation all over the place. Well, they didn't realize, well, it's always been there. Nothing yeah. to do with Fukushima. Yeah, again, it's the amount your body absorbs and can can rejuvenate the system with over. Yeah, there's safe and dangerous levels, and I was monitoring that while I, while that was going on, and yeah, there was nothing to worry about. What we do anyway. And and I talked to a guy about that when we, that bomb that dropped. It, he explained it where it was a surface nuclear attack, so that it not a, like <coughs> the Earth didn't absorb that much nuclear radioactivity. So that's why. People were like, well, people were living there. It wasn't something that absorbed it. It's not something that kept it for that long. Whereas in like Chernobyl, Tr Chernobyl, <laughs> Chernobyl, it was an impact explosion. Like it, it absorbed the grain to the ground. It, it, that's what it did. Like there were two different types of uh, impacts almost. Or ex were malfunctions, basically, is a better way of explaining Chernobyl. I'm trying to say it. One was in the ground, one was impacted on the surface. It's different. Okay, I'm looking at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's website, nrc.gov, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, it's saying natural background sources can be broken down into three different uh, sources of background radiation, cosmic, terrestrial, and internal. Cosmic, the sun and stars can uh, send a, cons a constant stream of cosmic radiation to Earth, much like steady drizzle of rain. There's more to it, but I'll, I'll skip that. Terrestrial, the Earth itself is a source of terrestrial radiation. Radioactive materials, including uranium, thorium, and radium, exist naturally in soil and rock. Essentially, all air contains radon, which is responsible for most of the dose the Americans receive each year from natural background sources. There's more that I'll skip. Internal radiation. All people have internal radiation, mainly from radioactive potassium-40 and carbon-14 inside their bodies from birth and are therefore sources of exposure to others. There's more, but I'll skip it. <laughs> I found that last one pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. So by having this uh, carbon-14 and potassium-40 in our bodies, we're exposing people around us to radiation. <laughs> I can't, I can't so, meet up with you, you're radioactive. So Indeed. does that mean if it's a large group of people, we can generate power to fill a small city? But you got to rub together really fast and really hard. <laughs> I've been trying, man. It ain't working. <laughs> it doesn't work on a city bus, okay? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> you guys should check out the, the link I posted. It's black and white. It's old. Seen this, it. This guy's a scientist. Reserve judgment until you watch this. Where did you post it? In the side chat. Ours? In the side chat. Our side chat? Yeah, yours. Uh, I, don't I don't see, see it. it. Yeah, I don't see it either. It's not there. Uh, let me try it again. I, I, don't be fake posting. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the YouTube side chat. Yeah, yeah. That's right. not the side chat. Oh, right, YouTube this is chat. Our, okay. The side chat is our chat, the one in here. Oh, sorry, sorry, man. My, my yeah, it's the one where I can go uh, well, say can, this shit. Yeah, well, we can talk shit and, and share links on the private side. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Right, right. right. I, I, I wasn't thinking. Sorry, I don't and, and, and here's the other one the, the idea that nuclear weapons don't exist. 
Uh, my first question is always, do we have nuclear energy? Yes. Then why couldn't we? Nuclear weapons do indeed exist. I have worked on them. Well, I was going to say that as well. This, but just the idea that there's nuclear energy, it, it's like, we'll put it this way, uh, Montreal. Yep. Do you believe nuclear waste is dangerous? So, I really don't. I really don't know enough to to give you like an an, uh, an educated opinion. If you got within ten feet of a nuclear reactor and your body started tingling, would you believe that it's dangerous? I believe it already. Okay, because I can I tell you now. I, I've worked on it at a. I worked on Edson. Um, Edson's uh, nuclear plant in, in, in San Clemente, and we were demoing the, uh, the reactor, <coughs> and, or one of them at least. And for three hours of a day, I would feel like I had tinkles all over my body anytime I got near the fucking reactor. Or not the reactor, the, the silo that's around the reactor, actually, which is thick ass concrete. Trust me, that shit is dangerous. That shit can do some damage. How do I know? Could be could be static electricity. Oh no! Aren't you just you get that tingly feeling after sex? No, because when they do that little reading over your body <laughs> to see how much you have on you, and it's not the same as when you came in, you know that you left with something. <laughs> the, waste, the waste from coal fired um, generators is much more hazardous than, than nuclear waste. But can't and you say the that's, same it, thing that's about also the other issue with it? Because a lot of people don't understand that the issue with nuclear these nuclear power plants isn't that they'll they'll melt they'll um they'll what do you call it fuck brain fart they'll uh when they when they fucking malfunction what do you call it a meltdown thank you describe it meltdown. <laughs> when they have the meltdown i just had a brain fart i don't even know why um when they have these meltdowns that's not the scare of that's not the worry that's not the issue so much with these nuclear plants the issue is is the waste it has to go somewhere and as of right now every nuclear plant stores it at their nuclear plant so it's just building up that's the issue now what would you say if i told you this gentleman here and i'm not just saying this guy's anybody he was one of the designers he says his name and everything he's a scientist he claims that what they say is waste they can use it it's a big power source, and it could be used as a weapon also, I believe. Well, let's check this out. A you got to check this guy out, man. I'm can telling you. uranium be used as a weapon? Yeah, if you hit somebody with a chunk of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, I mean, if I was so motivated, I could kill somebody with a drinking straw. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> I've Only never, the message. I've never heard the answer. That was so <laughs> beautifully put. That was that was beautiful. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it is dangerous, though. It can be if it's processed into a dangerous substance. So yes. You, so you can re be. It can be basically re-engineered into a. But Sean, it's nowhere near as hazardous as the, as the waste from coal plants. That stuff is really bad. Yeah, but you're not going to put the waste from coal plants into a bomb and blow some. No, but they do pump it into the atmosphere. Yes, they do, and that is a very serious issue. And we're going to be getting into that pretty soon. Waste from coal is also radioactive. See, because right now what I want to do is I want to talk about... See, I, I used to like TED Talks. I used to enjoy them. And then this little girl came on and had a really heartfelt story, and it really made me think, wow... That's what we need. We need more kids like that. And then I saw the damn girl on every goddamn fucking show that had anything to do with climate deniers. And I went, okay, this is obviously a propaganda. And people warned me. And then I was listening to a TED Talk the other day. And this lady came on talking about direct air capture, you know, the carbon capture. And that's like what I'm doing. That's like my main research and trying to expose how it's a scam. And she just lied out her ass the whole time, and it irritated me. But I can't show a TED Talk on my channel. 
I have to actually write and get permission to do this. So that is what I'm waiting for to have that big talk because I have to have permission to air her talking. It's fucking pathetic. I posted in the side chat. <laughs> 75 bucks. Today's, now we're getting closer. Uh, t- t- tomorrow could be different. <laughs> so, so uh yeah. yeah but what i was talking about when it comes to that carbon they they're, they're right now what they're doing is they're getting these systems out and a lot of places are buying them like california's bought a bunch of these systems but they're going under the guidelines that they're they're able to actually reduce co2 in the atmosphere the problem is is that they're real reluctant to explain how the the emissions and the energy spent to collect that co2 does have emissions itself not to mention, injecting it into the ground isn't safe. Why? Because we don't know how long it will last. So if we put all that energy, all that emissions into transporting and, and sequestering it, and then it leaks out, guess what it calls a waste? And they can't figure out how to, you know, 100% assure you that it's not going to happen again. And it's a big, it's a big it's a big scam. There's a lot more to it. A lot of, believe it or not, people, geoengineering that I think is going to be done in, in to basically collect as much CO2 as they can for this, this scam. Oh, yeah, and because it's going to be a, for the government, they want subsidies, they want carbon taxes, they want, as the lady says, the people need to invest in this. And it irritated me so much. But yeah, I'm still in the guides. Climate change is real. To the extent, I don't. I think they're they're definitely flexing those muscles for something, which is why I look into it now. Money, climate money, money, change money, money. is real. I can tell you right but, now. Uh, I can tell you. I can the give rest you. Is a scam. I can give you. I can show you three websites right now <laughs> that would verify it. That's Harvard University, the IPCC. Uh, um, report in carbon engineering. One of the, the real weird part of that is, is Bill Gates and David Keith are involved in all three. Hmm. Not to mention any of their techniques or any of these carbon capturing machines that they put out. If it works or people start buying, they don't make money on the manufacturing of these machines. They make money on the patents that they fucking put out. Because everyone's going to want one. They make oodles of money. Way bigger than just car- catching carbon. That's the crazy part. Because that David Keith is the guy who's promoting solar radiation management. Where you, uh, they're gonna, they want to spray sulfates into, this, into the stratosphere to blanket Earth. Well, they're not saying, if they do that, that the emissions and the CO2s and all that stuff that, that usually does dissipate into to, to space... Won't be able to. Hmm. What? What does that mean? It means any of the CO2 that we are producing at the time they're doing this will will build up. But hey, they're not going to build up because we got these machines. These machines that suck all the CO2. We make everything all better at a wonderful price of. There you go. That's a scam. There's no reason in hell to trap emissions to lower the global temperature. Because the emissions are here. Hmm. Seems odd to me. Anyone else that can say that's not odd? That's just the start. Wait until you. I'd say to- we just build a gigantic umbrella around the earth. They, yeah, the problem is, is they thought about that and it cost too much. They're talking $30 no. billion. Dollars. $30 yeah, billion. Just a bunch of paper, paper and, and bamboo. And. <laughs> Just build a gigantic parasol between the sun and earth. And yeah, and the weird part is that was one of the ideas. They wanted to actually So imagine what it is. Yeah, I know. Does. Yeah, they wanted to basically make a a, a year round eclipse to lower globe it's like really guys. And these are All right, I say plant trees and save the oceans. The problem is that? is that the tree idea it would the best way to do it would be ace forestation. Problem is is then we're losing crop lands and 
it takes too long. It's a great idea. It's just too long. We should have done that 30 years ago. All right, gentlemen. I'm out of here for this evening. All right, Kraft. Thank you for stopping morning. my friend. You mean uh, 30 years ago when people started talking about this and saying we should do it? Yeah. yeah when the, when the, the, the oil companies themselves <coughs> were telling people, hey, <laughs> in, in time, we're going to have a problem. So just so you guys know, we know it, and those things were never put to the public. And now the, the crazy part is this Exxon and Shell, they're all getting pinned for all this shit. Like, they're all getting sued. And realistically, they've known for a very long time. And yeah, I, I, I've talked when Barney was here, because me and Barney were talking about this. He kind of gave me more, I need to look at it from a bias, or more of a non-bias look, where they're trying to figure out solutions and when trying to, you're going to have those good and bad ideas. But, I mean, I just went through a scenario that is so 100% going to happen. And, and it's right there. That's like, that was like the first thing I found and, and, and was able to correlate. Remember, um, Unpaid, when I was talking to you the other night, I was telling you how I'm a, I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I'm a fact-based one. Those are the type of things I feel like I need to correlate and figure out how they correlate before I can say it's a scam but once i found out i wanted to say everything i can find out about those hey showing up wasn't the carbon capture uh um what's his name uh, say something that someone interrupted. yeah you're like no go, you're, go ahead. You, who, sorry you're, you're go super ahead. low so it's not i don't think anyone's doing it on purpose it's just when you chime in they're not hearing you as much in the in the in the internal chat an article about the hazards of coal combustion waste yeah, well, that's it's, a hell, well, it's so much worse than nuclear waste. It really is. Well, that's one of the things that they're um, they want to, to cut coal coal production. And the problem oh, and is coal combustion waste includes uranium. It, it, it is it's radioactive as well. Yeah, but aren't they also breaking that down into crude oils and all that kind of crap? Like they're trying to reuse different aspects of it so there's less waste. It's extremely toxic, and, and the volume of, of coal production, coal combustion waste, is a hell of a lot more than nuclear waste. Oh well, yeah, big time, big time. Huge. And and also one of the bigger issues that I have is you know what, Iowa, there's a hell of a lot more coal where you can get a lot more coal waste than you are nuclear waste. Oh yeah. Well, the one of the big issues I have also with what I was talking about is that um, the, you would think if if they're taking the CO two out. The, I, what what are they going to do with it next? Well, they they have answers. They want they have a, a, a some type of mixture, something they can do with it to make it some type of fuel. I haven't looked into it enough to just give you the whole crux of good or bad, so I don't really talk about it yet. But hey, um, yeah. that you're talking about the carbon dioxide going in the atmosphere. This is something else. This is the waste. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking. Well, in in the scheme of things, what I'm talking about is is after they cut all those things or try to cut it as much as they can. You know, plants that get rid of a lot of it. But I'm not talking about the emissions. I'm talking about the waste. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. yeah, I know. It's horrible stuff. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know what you mean. I'm, just, I'm kind of just piggybacking off of it. Um, but with the, uh, the idea that they're going to reuse these things, like um, the other, the one that I got the biggest issue with, and and one I know they've been actually using since the '70s is called EOR. Uh, basically, they recover oil with it with the CO2. Um, Petroleum has been doing it from the start. I, why, I don't know why it hasn't been a big deal then, but it is now. Or not a big deal, but what they're doing. But um, like oil production, going up like a thousand percent a day in oil production because of using the, the, the carbon dioxide that they capture from their machines. So it's like, <coughs> it's a never ending cycle that their bullshitting is working. Um, there's a place in Texas, uh, Nova, one of their oil places. They just got like a thirty-one million dollar grant from the United States government, promoting that it 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 works. And the reality of it is, in the end result, in the end result, their papers it even says that there was a two percent increase in emissions since you know they started. But the difference is, they were at like twenty percent emissions where they're emitted using a, a simple system or something like that. That's what they got awarded for. But they're putting it out there like it, it works doesn't work it has not there's not one study that has shown any carbon capturing has 
produce less emissions than it took than you capture basically no matter what because you got to get it that takes emissions you got to transport it that takes emissions then you got to do something with it that takes emissions there's no way you're capturing more than you're producing it's not going to happen these put the big numbers out there and it makes it sound good that's the issue I have with climate. I think they, and, and this is where my, my conspiracy mind kind of does kind of wander. I admit this 100%. This is why I kind of believe that they've, they've had a much better understanding of geoengineering than they put out there. And the reason it is, it's in such a, we got to do something now, is, is probably because they've been doing this for a while and didn't figure it out enough. Yep, geoengineering, hundred percent real. It, it's 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 actually more simple than you than you would think it is. It's not chemtrails. It has nothing to do with that. It's realistic changing how climates are. You can literally change it. That's why they have such a worry about it because they don't know very much. Um, just like I was saying, that SR the solar radiation management that's a form going to change how climates are. Um, and the big realization of what it is, or looking at it from a non-bias, we'll survive regardless. Like, real shit. Like, no matter what happens, we're, we're called humans. We've been around for millions of years. I think hundreds of thousands, I'll say. Because that seems like a more accurate number. Um, things change. Things happen. We're, some people die. That's not good. But, I mean, people die every day. Why aren't we worried about that shit? But now we're worried about that. It will adapt. Oh, if the oceans rise, guess what we do? We move east. Or some move west, but we move away from the beaches. That's just what it is. Um, pretty sure a lot of people watch Discovery Channel. There's a lot of fucking ancient civilizations under the ocean. So, <laughs> shit happens. Uh, we'll adapt. We'll evolve. I know you guys hate that word, some of you. That's just my, Don't my me. idea of it. That's just how it, I feel it works. We're not going to involve Sean. It ain't going to happen. What? <laughs> we're just going to kill each other. And, we can do uh, that anyway. Another, another civilization is going to take over. But we do that anyway. We do that all the time. I hate to be depressing, but that's human nature. That's just the way it is. I agree. That's yeah, it. at some point, the, the big red button is going to be reset. Oh, yeah. But th will that put it will we caveman again? Or will we be more advanced than that? Don't know. Well, look, there's, there's evidence that uh, their civilization before the pyramids, big stone, um, big stone builders. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I, I past 12,000 years. But, Maybe 10,000 around there. But imagine this. So during like the Renaissance, what what was the biggest known killer that we know of? The plague? Yeah. That wasn't technology. That could do it. A plague could easily wipe out of populations. Multiple countries. Shit, Ebola, Ebola had a chance. could have done it. Huh? <coughs> Ebola yeah, could have done it. That's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, the idea that we had to have advanced to our, made our technology so advanced that we took ourselves out. That could be just an idea of technologism or some shit like that. Like you think technology is so powerful, but the realization is, is that we could think we're so perfect that we don't have to worry about something like say vaccines maybe. And at some point something comes out and it wipes the shit out of everyone. That's, that could do it just as easily. That could wipe everyone out. The whole world. You know, anti-vaxxers are working on that right now. You know, that, it goes both ways. But my view on that is actually different. That's weird. I, I'm not a vaxxer, but I am for infants. It's weird. I just, maybe I don't understand how that works, but anything, any child that's an infant, I don't think you should be doing that too, but I'm not a doctor either, so... <laughs> No. Who the fuck am I? Normally, I don't. Normally, I don't refer to them as anti-vaxxers. I usually prefer, re refer to them as plague proponents. 
Well, the one thing that keeps me vac- vaccination uh, positive <laughs> is the fact that there are asshole parents and they will send their asshole kids sick as shit to school. And that's asshole So <laughs> vaccines seem to be a good idea to me because I do know kids and their parents are assholes sometimes and they do that. Yeah, but also many diseases have incubation periods where you just don't know if your child's carrying something or not. Yep. Matter of fact, that, that's very true. Um, there's actually a lot of, like, um, actually in my family, my brother has something. Um, I, I, I couldn't even pronounce the name, but basically it's hereditary and it's something that lays dormant the child's whole life. And at some point, they don't know why it could or could not just appear. So there are many things that can happen in the body that science doesn't know. Doctors have no fucking clue. They're trying to figure it out, but they got to do something. And that's what vaccines are for. It's the something. Now, my view only stands in infants because as far as I'm concerned, the way for vaccines to be known to work are by observing what happens, the reactions in patients. To me, I can't imagine them testing on infants. And if they do test, I'm even more against it. <laughs> but that's just me and my misunderstanding and exactly probably how it all works. But I understand. Well, what do you want to know? Anything I could, because that's the thing. It, to me, it'd be like, for instance, like the flu shot. We know the flu shot works. We observe people getting the flu shot. But how do they test something on an infant? How do all of these things that we give infants... How are they tested? What do you mean? How are they tested? Are you talking about dosage levels? Are you talking about yeah. the actual antigens that are used? Yeah, all of the, and it sounds all of the above because it's. <clears throat> well, I mean, you've got you, what they do is they develop uh, the antigens for the for the virus, and they uh, they culture those antigens. They already know what the dosage levels are good for 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 various people. Mm. That's what they go with. Well, then what about like um, what what is a vaccine they give a, a child at birth? Uh, just fuck it, just polio. I don't know. <laughs> if they give a polio- well, let's let's look it up. I mean, I'm no doctor either, but uh, you know, I have had kids. I mean, I've not given birth to them, but, you know. I hope not. That'd be kind of odd, uh, odd conversation. I mean, I know you've done a lot, but no that's, taking shit. Too, that's taking it too far. <laughs> Especially with this big old long gray beard. <laughs> and see, it's, for me, it'd be kind of hard. To, I'm like, I'm looking, but I don't know what I'm looking for. No vaccination schedule. Well, okay, so it's vaccination schedule. Okay, so I've got CDC Gov uh, birth to eighteen years immunization schedule. Okay, I got the same thing. Yeah, I got the same thing. Alrighty then. So, so at birth you're getting the hepatitis B. You get one dose. Okay, so right now it looks like one at birth. Two. There birth you go. At so. I guess that would be what, okay, a second dose at one month to two month uh, for hepatitis. Then, then you're getting the, you're getting the dosage. So then it's a retro, retrovirus, retrovirus. Uh, oh, fuck that. I'm not even going to try. There's a lot more. I'll share my screen. That's too, those words are way too big for me to be trying to pronounce. Annoy everybody. I'll share it. Okay, so if like, I'll go back to meat. Yeah. So <clears throat> in this situation that I'm looking at, this is birth to 15 months. So yeah, you got the rotavirus, then you got diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis. You got hemophilia influenzae type B, pneumococcal pneumono- conjugate, inactivated polio virus, influenza. Uh, that's influenza IIV and influenza. L A I V. For for say the the two month uh, bracket. Okay. Do, wouldn't they need a two, like an infant to 
not an infant or uh, well, I guess all you really would need is is cultures from an, a two month year old to test these things on. Is how it basically work, right? Is that am no? I you not? you know what a a good dose is for adults, and they know how much to cut back for for infants and children. Yeah, but how would you know how these things react to an infant's body, though? Because an infant at body first you wouldn't. Be, but that's what I mean. So how would you come to the conclusion? How do you test? How do you find out? Is it, well, you is know it, what is you know what say, <clears throat> you know what generally what uh, what's going to happen when you inject something into the human body. I mean, that's that's something that's already been tested and retested. You know, many many times. So there, you probably, know, uh, there probably was a time when they're they were low, low, low dosing and working their way up rather than just pumping something in. Like now, which would have it out. which would have been in the early days, like when Jenner uh, blew chunks of scabs up people's noses. Wow! <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> That's what that was the first vaccination. Say, say That's how they again. did it. What was he, it? he? He took the scabs from uh, a gal that had uh, had cowpox. <laughs> And he ground them up, and he blew the dust up a kid's nose. That's why it's called vaccination. It comes from vacas, meaning cow in Latin. Oh, there's some things, like I learn something new every day, but there's some things I probably could have lived just as well without having to know. Oh, so, is... yeah, the, the first one was him you know, getting a tube and blowing scabs up somebody's nose. Wow. Yeah. That's all I can say is wow. Because he had found out that uh, those those people that had uh, contracted cowpox were uh, immune to chickenpox. Really? So that's why he took those scabs and then blew them up someone's nose to infect them. That is. I'm sorry. That's fucking gross. <laughs> hey, chickenpox. Chickenpox could kill back in those days. Chicken pox can kill now. I had no idea. They're actually really yeah. dangerous for adults. Really dangerous. Mumps is scary. Or actually, I, if I do recall, they don't call them chicken pox. Really, they're called scabies for adults. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but the simple fact of the matter is that was that was the first vaccination. That is dirty. And if I recall correctly, it was some child that was related to Jenner. Oh, that's so, oh, that's fucking wrong. Makes me want to vomit in my own mouth. Oh, well. You know, it's, if it's try that, because it sure seems to be working for other people, or potentially have your child die from a horrible, debilitating disease, I'd, I'd roll the dice. All right, so I found a website that's actually pretty cool. So this is a vaccinations timeline. So early Chinese physician, smallpox epidemic, India, whooping cough. Isn't that the same thing? No. Okay. The other things that happen, like these are all population things that just wipe people out. Thank God for science, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of shit that went down. Man, all these people that, all these anti-vaxxers, how the hell did we get through all this shit? Like you were just saying a minute ago, because like our common day because is, is they're listening, they're listening to idiots who like to say chemicals are dangerous, chemicals are bad. Well, well, you know what? Like, Everything is made of chemicals. Well, that is true, but they are bad, though. They, they, they no, are. they're not. Yeah, they are. I mean, no, they, it depends on how they're used. There you go. Yeah, I just like that. that. Just like that rock of uranium. Just like a gun. Yeah. <clears throat> a gun can either kill you <laughs> or it can feed you. That, that uranium analogy was fucking epic. I think I'm gonna have to find that clip and use that clip when someone says something stupid. <laughs> I can take it out of his head. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. 
Now search for Jenner in here. What year, do you know around what year that would have been? Uh, it would have been, I believe, the early 1800s. <clears throat> but certainly don't quote me on that. Well, we hope so. Because uh, I don't know how to search it, but I can run through this timeline and it'll show me. Jenner. Gentlemen, nice talking to you tonight. All right. Time for me to go. Have a good evening, everybody. Have a good one. It's been three dimensional. Have your facts call my facts. They'll do lunch. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> good night, Montreal. I don't see anything about a Jenner. Yeah, let me do a quick look up here. I'm pretty sure there has so many more outbreaks of something that this thing is missing. Edward Jenner was an English physician, blah, blah, blah. The, uh, the terms vaccine and vaccination are derived from variole vaccine, term de uh, devised by Jenner to denote cowpox. When did cowpox come around? It's been around. Well, I mean, when was it? Okay, he was, he was born in uh, 1749. Okay, so. Died in, died in 1823, so. Okay, so yeah. yeah, his stuff's going to be in the 1700s. Late 1700s. Yeah, see, I'm not even seeing it still. Oh, look, there's Jenner's breakthrough. Cowpox is an uncommon illness, and cattle usually mild that could be spread from a cow to human via sores on a cow. During the infection, daily workers may have uh, pulsated in their hand, blah, blah, blah. Jenner introduced eight year old. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, it's so gross even reading it. James, what a matter from a cowpox sore on the hand of a milkmaid, Sarah, blah, blah, blah. Suffered from a, oh, that's so gross. I, oh, seems a child's protection day. That's gross. That is just gross. Oh, okay, it was in his arms. Okay, I was wrong. But it was still, yeah, but it was still like this, uh, that poor boy, that's child abuse. Oh, well, I guess what you're saying is that, <laughs> that kid had to suffer for what we have today. Well, the, the first, I mean, if, if you want to talk about, you know, crazy off the wall, stuff that that actually saves lives and does good uh but was insane at its first conception uh look at the uh look at the discovery of of how to get insulin what year is that would that be in here or should I this would have been early, early 1900s if i recall correctly oh wait yeah, um, weren't they killing the first like, they were like killing lots of people like people were just dropping when they because they found that they were like allergic to it and shit well, no, the, uh, the uh, let's see, let me back it up here. The, uh, the first insulin was, if I recall correctly, was taken from a dog. And it was basically just ground up pancreas that they injected oh. in this kid. What the fuck, man? And it was a Canadian people. child. Oh, if it was Canadian. <laughs> oh, yeah, Montreal's not here. Never mind. What? Uh, I can't find it on this list. I'm pretty sure I'm looking somebody's up got to First person seizure. saved by insulin. Uh, in January 1922, Leonard Thompson, a 14-year-old boy dying from diabetes in a Toronto hospital, became the first person to receive an injection of insulin. School vaccination requirements. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's on here. Before 1921, it was exceptional for people with type 1 diabetes to live more than a year or two. Whoa. That's crazy. Yeah, diabetes is a motherfucker. That, no one realizes I know. how bad that is. I know personally. Yeah, my brother's my brother's got a got it because he had, they, we had he had a liver transplant. 
So everything that okay. he, they have that he had they have him on is he got him on a bunch of steroids as well. And a lot of people don't realize that those steroids then fuck with the body and produce diabetes. So now he's got to do <coughs> blood sugar crap. Okay, here it says uh, uh, who lay dying in Toronto General Hospital was given the first injection of insulin. However, the extract was so impure that Thompson suffered a severe allergic reaction and further injections were canceled. Over the next 12 days, James Collip worked day and night to improve the ox pancreas extract. And a second dose was injected on the 23rd of January. This was completely su successful, not only in having no obvious side effects, but in completely eliminating the glycosuria sign of diabetes. Mm. That was in 1922, January. Yeah, this one's, I think, the best we'll get to is the uh, school requirements. That's probably what changed everything that you were just talking about. Well, I mean, when, when you've got a bunch of kids mandated by law to gather in one place and they're all snotting all over their hands and playing grab ass with each other and playing in the dirt. Yeah, there's there's gonna be uh there's there's gonna be a transfer of germs. Just a few. Can't you think? <laughs> No, I, I have issues with, with anti-vaxxers. I really do. Uh, have you talked to Grim lately? Uh, no, I'm done with him. Okay, yeah. Uh, he, he burned my bridge tonight. Oh, oh, oh did, I, did I miss something? Oh, he, right. started going on, he started going on about how some of these killings and shootings were just staged by the government. Yeah, I can't, I can't stand that uh, shit. And, and that's, that's a real no-no with me. I think we talked about that a little bit the other night where I was like, how can every they, they take it so far as every single event is a hoax if that were the case you're telling me that no one gets shot none of these events happen and it's bullshit it's just the way it well, is how, I, are you, how are you investigating these things are you you're watching it on youtube and you're deciding off a youtube clip if something happened Do you, that, that's so disingenuous as is well I know people and I, and I want to amend what I'm about to say I don't know them you know, close friends or anything. I'm acquainted with people that lost their children in the Columbine shooting. Yeah, then at that point, it's null and void. Even the conversation doesn't need to be had. And if they can think whatever they want, but they don't even realize that how impersonal they're getting when they make these comments. They don't realize how shitty they're getting when they make con uh, make comments like that. Exactly. And that's the problem. It, it's not a not a is your government asshole situation it's are you a like are you human because understand that for one this is a idea that you have and it at the very least you don't even take into account if it happened what you're doing to people because that's sure, why i'm done with that's yeah. why i'm done with pete shea also he started in with all these oh, you know, yeah. sandy hook was was bullshit and well when pete Columbine. was here i gave him a rule i told pete Who? Shea, me i i because pichet used to come here all the time oh, and okay I, and i had a rule i said and, and, and pichet I, i'm not gonna lie pichet is welcome on my panel as long as he follows this rule and here's why because i don't have rules on my panel it's an open panel but he does he's not allowed to talk about 9 11 on my panel and he has abided by that and out of respect to my rule you know not having rules but having rules to him is why I allow him come on. I kick him all the time because he fucking talks too much and he does it on purpose. But he does abide by that rule. So I, I have to give it to him there. He does may do it elsewhere. But yeah, he's that bad that he's not allowed to talk about it, period. And I actually have feelings about 9-11. It happened. That's no doubt in my mind. But like I said, I have other things that I think are were miscued. And it has nothing to do with the impersonal idea of it. That's what people don't realize. Sorry, sorry, Sean. Say again, Hugh? On page shields, did you look into the Electric Universe? What did you find out? I uh, I was starting to look into it, um, you know, getting some things organized. Because what I try to do is I try to find sources, then I'll organize the lists. Then after I've done that, then I'll start going in and 
and start to start looking at things and then connect okay well this one's talking about this and this, you know this other one's talking about the same thing so i'll try to read them together apparently, i was getting things organized apparently harvard has got a, a a really big uh program uh committed to electric universe i found that out when i was looking into something you may want to look that up too harvard yeah he sent me the link okay yeah, I, but I'm you know, as my, far as as far as dealing with him, I'm done with him. Yeah, it, 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 you'll you'll realize that there's a, and I'm pretty sure you already know there's there's people you don't want to have a conversation with, or it will definitely bring the bad side. Yeah, Ali B is one big one on the list. Yeah, um, he just he just enjoys hearing himself talk way too much. Yes. Well, you heard how defensive he got when I pointed out it's not mainstream, it's something on the fringe, right? Yeah. He got very defensive when I said that. And he, he was changing yeah. that day on that issue. Here's the thing. I mean, if it was legit science, you go through channels, right? He can hear yep. set up an organization to promote the Higgs boson. He can be trying to get channel and he can it. I saw what the um, electric unit tried to do. They're campaigning with YouTube videos, the Thunderbolt projects, and all that shit. That's a campaign. That is not going through scientific channels. All right. I pointed out. Nope. I, I'm nope. qualified. I, I don't have the physics to evaluate it myself, so I defer to the experts. And when you can convince the experts in something in it, then I'll take it seriously. And they haven't been. Was, that's why it's on the fringe. Yeah, I was surprised I had enough vodka left in that bottle. <laughs> that's my position on it, and he doesn't like that. He's a very different to when, I, when I say that. Well, I I am a skeptic. I want to see evidence. I want mm -hmm. to see citations. Um, I don't. I don't believe in the whole they thing. You know, they are responsible. Who's they? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, I'm they. Well, yeah. why would they do it? Why would they do something like that? Well, to control. Well, have control. how do you <laughs> how, how do you use hiding in quotes the shape of the earth to control people? Yeah, that's it's exactly the same thing Grimm's doing with the electric universe as well the flat earth thing. He doesn't realize how flat earth he's being. Well, I realized right away because he says they, that, he says electric universe they, is they, covered. They, scientist wants to go up go up against the status quo. As we said, yeah, he, he says he, that electric universe is hidden by science, and right off the bat, it's not true because there are links to lots of studies about electric universe. In that sense, how how are they hidden? Well, look into the psychology of of uh, people who. Uh, brainwash others okay the the person that's doing the brainwashing wants to convince their followers they're they're persecuted if they can do that if they convince them that they're being persecuted that's going to to set up the enemy yeah and that's going to help them bond even more but right. look look into the psychology of brainwashing using uh persecution so it's a yeah, it's really it creates, interesting stuff. That's creating the you versus them. And you've got Which all is with the electric universe. If, if Grimm's anything to go by, because I only know about it through him, if there's anything to go by, they're hiding it from us, they're protecting the status quo. Scientists don't want to challenge the status quo. That's why it hasn't been accepted. Yeah, but everything I'm reading, I mean it, it's it's hundred percent still theoretical. Through theoretical science, it's not anything that they've observed to a, an extent of testable. Because I, I remember he said, like, and I, again, I don't know enough about it to make a real impression on whether or not it's it's accurate. But everything I've I've come across that's about it, it they are able to create a lot of these effects in a, in a laboratory. But they're he's not telling you that they're having to go to certain extents to create these effects. They're not, it's not. A natural observation it's not what we see it's a can this happen when we do this to it type situation well i don't have a physics degree i mean there's no way i can i have the ability to uh, evaluate the claims of the electric universe 
So I defer to the expert. Yeah. That's what I do. Mm, I have when to. The convinced, then I'll take Grimm seriously. Until then, sorry, pal, you've got work to do. Well, they put, to put, do. put it this way. There are things that Electric Universe has put out that science is looking at. The difference is, is that they haven't been able to observe it and, and repeat it to to create a, a conclusion upon what they're observing. To oh, the science isn't looking at it; they're ignoring it. But that's the thing. I think that's I think that's a part of what Unpaid Chills is saying is he's doing. He's he's not only giving you the sources, but he's also giving you the the this is why. So when you read these sources and they don't sound accurate to be observable, it's not because they're not observable. It's because they won't let you think it's well, observable. When- when you boil down what Grimm's saying, it's exactly the same as the flat earthers are saying. They know, but they're hiding it. Yeah, that's all it is. It's literally all it is. It, it's, 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 it's what Unpaid Shields is saying. It's his way of saying, uh, you, gotta, you have to look at it this way when you read it. They're protecting the status quo because they want to stay face. That's what Grimm said today. Hmm? He said, they're yeah. protecting the status quo because they want to stay face. They don't want to admit they've invested all this money... <laughs> You know, looking into things like dark matter and dark energy. The answer is all there, and the, and the scientific community ignoring it because they want to save face. That's what Grimm said. But That's the it. thing is, any scientist that can turn the scientific community of their field on its head would be heralded as a hero. That's yeah. what gets them out of the bed in the morning. That's 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 one of the things that made me realize they, that we don't live I on a flat Earth. Because um, the idea that science. And it, it was in my head that science was that way, where it was, uh, and and I can even give you an argument of how science is very biased, and it and it, and it works. It's it's how it is. If um, let's say I'm I'm a scientist, I'm fresh out of school, I start okay. working for a company. You're a scientist. Yeah, I work for a company. And uh, X Y Z company. And, yep, and they pay me to do a study or a long study that you know it's going to take a decade. And in that idea, every scientist that does scientific work, most of them have something that they, they got into science for that they, they're interested in. Their own study. Not they're working yeah. on one, their own. And most of the time what they're doing is they're usually saving money to then create their study. So Their they, pet project. Exactly. So they, what they're doing when they're working for these other companies is literally just making money. <coughs> and in my and eyes, the bills. Yes, and in my eyes, there could be there could be studies that are driven longer to create more of a, a nest egg. I would say it's not so prevalent, and I don't even think it would be even so wrong. The idea of is once they get to a conclusion, they'll, they're going to get to a conclusion. But in the, that time of wanting to get to their study, I could see a lot of things being overlooked or or not or prolonged. In, in lieu of what they want. That could be biased, but the problem is, is that there's someone who's already made it. There's someone who's drive, who doesn't want to work for somebody, they just want to make it. So they're not doing that. They're looking for that hole. They're looking for that what's wrong every day. Just like Hugh say, they wake up for that shit. Every day a scientist wakes up and goes, I want to disprove Einstein some way because oh my God, I'd be famous. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I watched a documentary the other night about the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's in two parts. One of them was the history of, of the Hubble, you know, all the problems they had, now they put it right. And the second documentary was about the discovery they made with Hubble and the physics behind it. Now, these people are PhD, you know, astrophysicists. And I watched the whole thing and I thought, I wonder how many times they mentioned plasma. Do you know how many times plasma was mentioned? I have no good by zero. Zero, yeah. They didn't bring it, it didn't come up at all. But see, and here's the word it's plasma, this, plasma, that. But here's the other reality of that. We and we we all have to realize this. I'd say I'm gonna say for myself, but it, there is a number for everyone. I'd say about eighty percent of the information that I put in my brain about science is science explained to me so I can understand it. Because I know for a fact that if I sat in the middle of a room where they had just found a new particle and they were talking, I would sit there listening to a different language. And the, because of that, there's a lot of things that are left out. There's a lot of things okay. that are, aren't detailed enough. And I think that's okay. A, a, about science hiding stuff. 
<clears throat> in uh, in the book Play, uh, published 2009, the author quotes Isaac Asimov as saying, here's the quote, the most exciting phrase to hear in science is not Eureka, but that's funny. <laughs> yep. That's called the anomaly, the time that it changes. That's Every scientist is looking for that. Trust me, a scientist does not want to look at the same result every time. Trust me, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for that time it doesn't work and why it doesn't yeah. work. Because the second they figure out why it doesn't work, they become the top dogs. Yeah, I think science is biased. Or scientists, I'm sorry. Scientists are biased. But there's too many tools to fact check it. The guy who who tries to pass bullshit gets caught. Yeah, she's well, gone through. You the, remember that you remember that cold fusion thing when uh you know with the University of Utah some some you know 30 40 years ago? I think that's when they they had claimed they had done it. And Right. And, uh, actually, I think it was like 30 years ago if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. My ex was at the that university uh doing her PhD work. Uh, not in that department, but in another department. But she was there, and she hung out with some of the people that were involved with that. You know, getting the after, after work drinks and that sort of thing. And she was a, a post grad. She, uh, she told me that you know the science that went into that. She she saw kind of early on was kind of eh, it needed more work. Mm -hmm. That was a direct quote from her. It needed more work. And it was since found out to be pretty much bullshit. Yeah. It's because when I looked into that kind of stuff, it's like, um, it's, it's weird. Um, it, so the way I seen it and the way I look at it is I can bullshit as much as I want. I can come in here and tell you a theory of gravity and guess what? Yeah. I mean, until you're able to really look into it, it's all it is is me saying something. Yeah. That's fine, but the second you start looking into it, aka the the peer review, you're gonna start seeing holes in it. And remember, these peer reviews they want to publish your shit. If you figured out how gravity is fake, and they come out with that shit, they become famous as well. Yeah. So the idea that, that they the get, journals gain prestige exactly that's like the Royal Society. They have prestige because oh. they have published some of the greatest fucking publications ever. That's just the way it works. Yep. So trust me. Same not, with same with JAMA. Yeah. So if they publish something that says gravity's fake, and they've run, and they basically saying we we endorse this, they look stupid. So they're not doing that shit on purpose. Shit gets sometimes shit gets through. That's usually these bullshit ass ideas of something that really doesn't have a real functional in anything and they probably were overlooked because a human error and guess what they also got caught they also were found and thrown out why because there's always people trying to have theories that will correlate will, will run across these things and if any of these bullshit theories come about in someone else's good theory they get to run their eyes through their papers and throw them out when they find something wrong. So there's always a pre the peer review process isn't one time, it's not a publication. That publication make, means ten thousand other scientists get to fucking peer review it and repeat the experiments and things like that. And they do. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. You don't and you, you don't hear about it, but a lot of peer reviews every year get overturned. That's what the, oh, yeah. a lot of people don't understand. You know, science is not just a, a rubber stamping of any whack job that comes along with a with a binder in his hand saying, "Look, I've you know discovered something new." Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I wish it did, but it doesn't. Well, in the in the early days, you know, and you know, before uh, the rigorous scientific method was codified, yeah, it it could get like that. And you know, but it's 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 not that way anymore. That's just not how things work now. They figured out a way to to cut out the bullshit and make a self correcting process. Yep. And that's and, the other thing. The scientific method is not a way of screwing it. It's a, actually a way of fact checking the people you don't trust or fact checking ideas that don't necessarily mesh with what is accepted as as the way things work. Ooh, ooh, a better one. 
it's a better hmm. a, a way of fact checking your own bias. There you go. And that's the scientific method actually is. There is there is no and this is this is me talking here. I don't believe there is any good scientist that would ever cringe at the thought of having his work fact checked by having someone else redo the experiment. Oh yeah, that's that's another one. That's a, every time someone does an experiment and and the results are as the the first scientist came up with, the scientist that came up with them first goes, "That's right, motherfucker." <laughs> mm -hmm. He he pops his collar. So trust me. He's like, mm -hmm, that's yeah, me. That's this, me. This idea that they falsify science is so unreal. It's un it's it's impossible because science isn't a scientist. And then you have to look at who is doing these, who is repeating these experiments. Other people in the same field of science that are competing for the same notoriety, that are competing for the same grant money, that are competing for the same prizes. Yeah. But yeah. The people that you know of in science are are just people. That it sucks ass, but they don't have the list of hundreds of thousands of scientists that have actually, you know, actually, you know, put weight into what we know. They have Einstein, Newton, Galileo, but there are hundreds of others that contributed. That's another yep. problem that we don't talk about the little ones. But the realization is is that no one person can do it themselves. And and the whole the only idea Flat Earth has that is correct is that the, you haven't had time. But the reason you haven't had time is because all the time that we've had has been observing a globe, not a flat Earth. Well, I, I don't understand what you mean when you say you you haven't had time. So <clears throat> could you elaborate on that? So what they say a flat Earther will say will say is they haven't had enough time and enough resources to come up with the evidence that shows it's flat, and just the, the talk that we had about how science works, how mm. you know knowledge works, it, it, it goes against flat Earth because if, if it was flat, we'd have all these correlating um, theories and observations throughout the whole 1,500 years the globe has been, you know, the globe. It wouldn't be the last 500. It'd be the whole time, it'd be these, core, these conflicting ideas and conflicting um, observations. And yeah, there were conflicting observations, but they go away because they don't work. Here's here's another point. How many flat Earth maps are there? Uh, flat Earther maps or flat maps? Yeah. Flat Earther maps. N zero. No, they've got several maps. No, no, but I, I would equate it to that actually work. No, no, no. I'm just saying how many maps are there? I'm not saying how many there are there that work. Oh. Saying how many are there? Oh, hundreds. Okay. <clears throat> how many explanations are there of how the eclipses happen or tides? Oh, none. None. No, even if even if they're bullshit. I'm not saying right. I'm just saying how many how many answers are there? Uh, I've never seen one. <laughs> I've never okay. the only answer, and, and I'm sorry, the answers I've gotten for them, I can't use. I would never. Invisible does not work. Well, no, these are, these are the answers. I'm not saying they have to be correct. Okay, okay. I'm not even saying they have to be within the realms of reality. Okay, but the, okay, okay. I, yeah, quite a few. So, so you get quite a few. Um, you get quite a few answers on how the tides work. You get quite a few mm -hmm. answers on every different question you ask. And we get chastised as globe proponents. We get chastised for the same old story each and every time. Well, we've only got one answer for how this works, but they can't get their shit together and settle on a single answer. You know, they, they, they've got no answers for anything. They've got a they got a hundred different maps. They can't figure out what it looks like. They can't figure out how it works. They can't figure out how to explain it, but they know what it isn't. Yeah, that that's and, and the idea because, um, like you were asking me about the flat maps. Yeah, the you gotta, guys got to understand in the ancient times, I'm pretty sure they weren't caring for, well, for the same reason we don't use it now. We don't. Who uses? No one carries a globe around on a boat. They had to figure something out. 
Do they use? Do they, uh-huh. flat, they flatten out the. Hey, what's up, Wolf? How do sir? They do flatten out the maps, but the problem you is, like is that between a map of the flat Earth and a flat map of the Earth. That's what the AE is. Yeah, there's a, there's a map, and it's not. Well, no, it's no, no. The well, there, there, there are ancient, oh, yeah. but there are ancient maps that they they depict depicted as flat. The problem is, is that they also didn't have. They didn't know how much world there really was. And, and was this guy called Southern Israelite? You know who that is, Sean? Oh, yeah, unfortunately. And he showed this picture, and it was some, I don't know where, but it was some kind of a military ready room, NATO or somewhere like that. And on the wall was an AE, right? And he was saying, look, they've got a map of the flat Earth on the wall. I said, no, they don't. They have a flat map of the Earth. The AE has certain usages. It's not a map of the flat Earth. It's a flat map of the Earth, just the same as the Mercator projection is. Yeah, and and a lot of them don't realize because <coughs> I've heard them say this a few times. Where on um, naval sh- on naval ships, they have a flat Earth map or the AE map. No, they don't even they don't use the AE map on a fucking ship. If they if you looked on a map that's used on a carrier, for instance, that map is hundred percent usable to navigate throughout the world. It is not an AE map. That Australia is not that far from America. It doesn't work that way. They're not dumb. They know exactly what they're doing. If that were the case, we would see flat Earth maps on naval ships. It's just the way it is. How else would they navigate? And we know yeah, they navigate all yeah. over the world. So long as your line goes through the, the center of the map, then, then those distances are accurate. But around the outsides, they're not. It's just not... Yeah. It's not accurate how they depict. They even depict well, the maps. Well, e- even even further, you know, they they talk about okay, you say it's a globe, and you yet you make flat maps. Well, that distorts everything. Well, show me a flat earther map that doesn't distort everything. And and I found a program a while ago that you can actually do this. You can take a a, a AE projection, crop it so like your the the outside border is gone. And you can actually put it on a on a sphere on a sphere object, and it works. Let me get this straight. Antarctica looks a little funny, but at the same time, it's not accurate. The A map's not accurate enough uh, for the for Antarctica because it looks like a big ring in, on uh, A map, so it's not going to depict Antarctica correctly, which is why it does that. But everything else fits perfect. But like, how do they think you have a map with you if it's not flat? Like, it's printed on paper. How do you print it not flat? Exactly. No, you got to go to Walmart and carry one of their globes around. <laughs> and yeah, is it the idea? It's if you're gonna depict maps a certain way, understand what maps. And and again, those maps, just like our models, are are put together through data. It's not like we're we fake hey. a map. Not like we fake the shape based on bullshit. I mean, you can, if you can drive a mile, you can fact check the Earth. Understand that, okay? And the precision, what it like matches the reality, makes it so that it can't be just made up simply. Yeah. I mean, in, in yeah, if I what I'm like, said about they don't have a, um, any unified ideas about anything somebody compiled a list of the flat earth of reasons why things objects appear bottom first in the distance and there's like 25 of them on there it's perspective it's um angle of attack but that's the, that that's the reason that for that is because they're they're repeating they're playing the repeat game understanding what they're saying is is the issue for instance but, Every time I hear perspective, I want to explain to him, stop saying perspective. When you say perspective, all you're saying is I see. That's it. It doesn't mean, yeah. So like on page Shields was saying, on the globe side, we have one explanation for objects disappearing bottom first. The flat earth is a, is a little like over 20 of them, I think. And on the globe side, there's this thing that there's only the like current accepted model and the fucking how it is and there are people who are incorrect that i mean incorrect that can be corrected and there is the one real answer but on flat earth everyone is right because nobody knows for sure what it is <laughs> and that's that's what it is it's, and it's it's 
that's, that's that's why I was asking that question the last time I did a stream. It was why aren't there more flat earthers calling out flat earth bullshit? I mean, it's aren't you looking for truth? Why aren't you? You should be calling out the bullshit more than anybody who thinks it's a globe. But how do they know what is bullshit? Because nobody knows Look, what it is. Actually researching, wanting to know the truth. It worked for me. But they can't search truth because that will delete the globe. That's the problem. That's the point. Yep. Are you here for truth or are you not? Pretty simple question and it's a pretty simple how answer. Many, how many I, you can't be both. Out. How many flat earths are calling out FE Corp for what they just put to slice bar cane? That's None. disgusting. None. If if someone on the globe side did that, they'd be they'd be up be uproar, wouldn't they? It it make it it to me, it looks like they're scared. Yeah, well they're but trying also, to the obviously they're trying to silence the guy because he's criticizing them and they mm -hmm. say they're truth seekers. Oh, the Astro, Astro Rex just posted a comment in uh, YouTube chat. Flat Earthers love lies and revere liars. And I, I have to, as a group, I have to agree with him. There are some out there that are genuine uh, mm -hmm. that are actually looking for truth. And, yes. and I'm convinced those will come back to the globe side. Yeah, I did. But by and large. I, and one of the best things, Astro Rex, he actually was one of the people that watched me my whole progression, the whole thing from deep into Flat Earth. Debating, I went over to that server and debated every day. He watched me the change. He watched it all the way through. It, it's just, it's it's something that should be progressive. It shouldn't. If you're, in, I mean, you can be in these stuck in a rut, but if you're looking for truth and you're trying to understand it, there should always be a progression, and then eventually, reality. But also, I have to criticize Globeside a bit because there has been bullshit going on from the Globeside, which has been gone uncalled. Oh, like, yeah. On, yeah, you but, get it. Well, for me, what I notice the most is is the disrespect. It's it's. Are you getting information out, or are you looking for an opportunity to call someone stupid? I have an issue with that. I call that out every day. There's other stuff I need to call out, but that's also because I would have to listen to them. I honestly. I don't listen to Fight the Flat Earth, Red's Red. I don't listen to them. Why? Because there's too much covenanted bullshit and shit talking going on for me to be interested in what anyone's got to say. And that's the reality of it. I like when uh, Schrillinger's cat comes over here and talks because I can get information from him. But the problem is, is I'm not going to Fight the Flat Earth to listen to, to Schrillinger's cat. He, he, he's already shown me. He's not there to teach anything, educate people. He's there to get a rise out of Flat Earthers. And I'm not interested in that. Yeah, I don't like the idea of just like winding them up and making them lose their minds. A AKA that whole dumpster fire thing is so fucking annoying. Well, that's the thing. I've always said the same, this one thing. How you talk to people is going to determine what you're there for. If you talk to people and call them morons and dumbasses every other word, you anything you say is irrelevant. No one hears it. You're an asshole. Trust me. The second someone pins you as an asshole, no one wants to hear anything you have to say. And because of that, the disrespect way doesn't work. And once you've start, you've gotten to that point, it is a dumpster fire. The globe tides, they love it when they love it when they act when people act like Nathan does, and then they complain when Nathan does it. That's the the funniest yeah. thing. Like no one trusts Nathan. Well. I wouldn't go on any of the other channels because I know it's going to happen. And I have, I've said it very openly. I very, make it very, very, very clear how I feel. Fight to Flat Earth, he's in it for the gimmick. I've watched him on three different occasions, sideswipe with a, a debate, and set up a debate for himself. To me, yep. he's not here to teach people how to fucking how no, system no. works. He's there to make a show. And that's fine. But that's what he's there for. That's, and I'm yep. not interested in it. That, that's me. That's one of the but, rights I have. It's unfortunate that uh, Fight the Flat Earth is the so-called spokesman for Globe Side now. But like yes. that's what I, I don't. I, I don't believe that. I, I don't consider him. For me, but, yeah, but, yeah, I, I don't but, consider him a spokesman for uh, the Globe proponents at all. Well, that's the problem yeah. that happens because Flat Earth does that. Like for instance, Rumpus somehow is one. Uh, yep. Fight the Flat Earth is one. Like the same way people act, at, oh, and we do it too. Riley is one, 
it, it, that's the idea that any of these people are spokesmen for shit. And the realization is if we were that, if we were spokesmen, we'd be government, we'd probably work for the government and we wouldn't be here. I would be a paid shill. Yeah, I don't think they're paid shills for this. <laughs> they got so many bigger things going on. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more paid shills for Al Qaeda and shit. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that's the uh, you're gonna be killed now. I'm not. They don't know who I am. I'm. I was. I'm. They'll find you. They'll find you. Damn it. Maybe they'll track you down through the cameras in your in your phone and in your in your television set. Well, they are going to have a party after this stream because that's when it gets fun. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've also implanted bionic cameras in your, your pet hamster's eyes. I said that a few times. I said, anyone who wants to hack me and, and watch me and my cameras, there's a lot of weird shit that goes on in front of this computer. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. You guys saw my yep. research history. You never listen to me again. Hey, in high school, I was voted most likely. <laughs> That's it? Just most likely? <laughs> yeah, just most likely. Jeez. All if right, somebody's going to do it, he will. I got to go to work tomorrow. <coughs> like I said, this was supposed to be a test stream. It ended up being a good stream, so I'm happy with it. I changed the title what and everything. Time is it for you? Um, it's 1.30 in the morning. I got to wake up at 5. Oh, gotcha. yeah, it's 3.30 here. Yeah, so. You're going to be tired. I wasn't even, like I said, I wasn't even going to go live. It was just literally making sure my computer didn't fry on me. And all is good, so I'll be streaming again. I didn't disappear. But uh, yeah, I had fun. This was a good stream. I like to talk. Yeah. Have um, a good one. Yes, you too. My guy. A, a good stream is a healthy thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Unpaid. I appreciate you being here. That was a fun conversation. I even more appreciate that uh, the, the example you gave with the, the uranium in the chunk. That was awesome. Uh, I got there you are, Slam. Uh, Hugh, it was always good to have you on, sir. Um, I do apologize. It, trust me, I don't think anyone was cutting you off. It was a hundred, Your mic is just low. Um, yeah, I, it, I, is, I, it is. I, I may next time try to use that voice meter and see if I can get it turned up a little bit. I just don't, I'm not using it right now. Okay, thank thank you for the input. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. I, I don't know. I like hearing your what you got to say. Is this your you were low? Oh, okay. I, I, and and Hugh, at least here, Hugh, you were also breaking up a little bit. Oh really? Yeah, just not a whole lot, but generally, uh, it would happen right at the beginning when you started talking. Okay, I'll bear that in mind, and I'll, be, I'll try and be more, more patient. Yeah, because I, I noticed I was doing it a few times, and it's not it's definitely not on purpose. Yeah, I understand. All right, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's it. Who else is in here? That's it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Good all night, right, Sean. Yep, you guys have a good one. Um, I'll all right, get out of here. I'm sick of looking at you all. Yep, yep. Thank <laughs> you, <Bob. laughs> Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. All right, that, yeah, that was a fun one. Um I think, like I said, it was, this was a tester. I wasn't even trying to stay on and all that good stuff, but ended up being a good stream, so I was happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will be live tomorrow at some point in time, and uh, I got some good topics I want to talk about. Like I said, I'm just waiting on permission for that CO2 conversation because I don't want to reuse TED Talks and get in trouble. But other than that, thank you guys. Um, test went perfect. I will be definitely on tomorrow.
Thank you.